What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video today, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build a profitable WordPress blog from scratch. Uh, this is actually my first video in my brand new video set here, so I'm super excited for that. Uh, let me know what you guys think of it down in the comment section below because this has literally been about a month and a half of work and about $10,000 invested here in equipment and lighting. So super excited about that and definitely looking to push that quality to the next level with this new set here. Now, I will say this before getting into the video here, guys. If you're looking to create a blog about what your cat is doing or what you ate for lunch, this is not going to be the video for you because that is the type of blog that somebody makes for a hobby and they're not really looking to make money. Well, at the end of the day, as much as I do enjoy writing and sharing information with the world, my goal is to figure out how to monetize these different online platforms. So I'm not gonna teach you how to write about your cat or what you had for lunch. I am instead going to show you how to make a real side business um, with a blog. Now, first of all, guys, I wanna go ahead and give you a little bit of background on myself, just in case this is the first time that you're seeing me here. That way you know that I'm not just a complete moron teaching you about blogging. So I actually entered the blogging space in 2018 when I started the inf uh, Investing Simple blog. So I own investingsimple.com. I actually have a couple of business partners in that now, but we launched that blog back in 2018. And since then it has grown to be quite successful. It is now one of the fastest growing personal finance blogs. And in December of 2020, we did over $20,000 of revenue from that blog. And so believe it or not, based on, you know, profit and revenue, this blog is actually worth north of half a million dollars even though we started it just two and a half short years ago. Now, that is my one blog, investingsimple.com, but I actually started a different blog fairly recently in fall of 2020 called farmlandriches.com, and that's a brand new blog that I started from scratch, and it's already making money, even though it's only getting like 20 hits per day from search. So you don't need to have a heck of a lot of traffic in order to make money, and I hope to show you guys that throughout this entire video. So I have a older blog that's very successful, but I also have a brand new blog that was just started that's already making money, and I'm gonna show you guys both of those and all of the inside information about how those blogs actually work. Not only that, guys, I'm going to show you actual earnings proof for Farmland Riches, which is the blog I started most recently. And I started that in November. The first month that I actually started it, it made $100. And then in December, it made $245. And then in January, I expect to do somewhere around $500 from this blog. And that may not sound like a big deal to you guys, but for me, this is an additional revenue stream for me. And it's also another blog that I plan on building up and selling down the line. So if you're excited about building a blog that can potentially put extra money in your pocket and then maybe eventually become a larger business such as Investing Simple, well, I can promise you guys, you are in the right place. And I think one of the most interesting aspects of the blog Farmland Riches is that I have not touched this blog since November 12th. I built it with my team members and I paid somebody to write most of the content, but once the whole site was designed and built, it's on complete autopilot. I don't touch it. I don't do anything with this blog. It just simply sits out there on the internet and gets eyeballs every single day. A certain percentage of those people click on the links and I earn money in the process. But I'm gonna show you guys how that all works step by step. So if you're ready to invest a couple of hours here with me guys to learn about three years of information here, I'm excited and I'm really glad that you guys are here and I'm literally gonna teach you the mistakes I've made and my successes and my losses over the last two to three years of blogging. It's kind of like a college curriculum of blogging right here in one YouTube video. So as you guys can probably tell, I put probably 20 or 30 hours of research into this video. So all that I ask from you is if you do enjoy this video at any point in time, if you've gotten value from this, please just drop a like for that almighty YouTube algorithm as this will help this video to be shared with more people. 
Now, real quick, guys, I do have to give a quick thank you to our video sponsor today, which is none other than Bluehost, which I see as the simplest and easiest to use web host for getting started with blogging in 2021. Not to mention, guys, they're actually offering my viewers a exclusive discount on their hosting packages, and it's a price that you're not going to see anywhere else. So if you want to follow along step by step, I'm going to show you how to get started with your web host, and we're going to be using Bluehost and I'll show you exactly how to get that exclusive discount for my YouTube viewers. Full transparency here, guys, I am affiliated with Bluehost. So if you do decide to use my link, it is a way to give back to me at no additional cost to you. With Bluehost, you're gonna be able to get your website up and running for as little as $2.95 per month. Not to mention, it also comes with a free WordPress auto installation, a free domain for one year, a free SSL certificate, as well as free website migration if you're already working Working with an existing host and maybe you're looking to switch but more on that later guys when we talk about Bluehost and setting up your web hosting that being said guys I do have to make a few quick disclaimers before we get into this number one if you are watching this on your laptop or your computer right now and you do have your phone next to you please just go ahead and put that on silence just to eliminate any potential distractions because we're gonna move pretty quickly here and if you look away from the screen for 30 seconds to text you might be totally lost so I encourage you guys to shut off distractions and tune in here because I'm not going to waste any of your time second disclaimer if you are looking to take action on this advice today you're going to need to invest around $100 in website hosting um, if you're not ready to make that type of commitment you should probably still watch the video that way you are aware of how blogging works but if you are looking to take action just understand you might have to spend around $100 to get the best pricing on that web hosting. Also guys, full transparency, I am not here to sell you anything. I don't have any course on blogging. It's funny, I was actually going to make this a paid course, but I decided to just give it away for free guys because I'm not really in a position anymore where I'm trying to just make the most money possible. I'm just trying to add as much value as possible. And of course, if you want to give back to me, you can always use that affiliate link down below and I will earn a small commission in the process. Um, and that's pretty much it guys. That's the whole deal here. So let's jump right into it and start off by talking about hosting platforms before we jump into my computer for the screen share section of the video. So the very first thing to figure out when starting a new blog is your hosting platform. And this is essentially where your website is going to live because your website is going to consist of images and text and different elements that have to be hosted on the internet. So you could buy a server yourself and build your own server, but that's gonna be very expensive and probably not cost effective. A better strategy is to utilize the resources of others by using a web host. These are companies that have servers all over the world and they offer space on these servers for a monthly subscription allowing your website to actually live on the internet. Now, since we're actually doing a WordPress website, which is all I personally use, I don't use Wix or Squarespace or any of those site builders, I just build WordPress websites. Since we're doing that, I chose Bluehost based on number one, the low and affordable pricing, number two, it's very user-friendly, and third and finally, they have that one-click WordPress installation that I'm gonna walk you through step by step. That being said, guys, let's now jump into the computer and get to the screen share section of the video all right guys so we're going to go ahead and start off here with the sign up process over on bluehost so if you want to go ahead and open up that link from down below in a new tab here or you just simply go to ryanoscribner.com slash bluehost and essentially by doing that you're going to ensure that you get the best possible pricing here of 295 per month for the package. If it says $3.95 per month, that means you're not using the link in the description and you're gonna pay more potentially for no particular reason. So if you want to get that discount, guys, you gotta make sure you use the link down below. And again, the reasons why we're using Bluehost, first of all, you're getting a free domain name for the first year. You're getting a free SSL certificate, which I'll explain what that means shortly. We're gonna have one click WordPress install and they have really solid 24 seven support, which is helpful if you have any questions. So we're gonna start off here by clicking get started. 
Um, as far as the plans go here, in order to get the cheapest deal, you should probably go with the basic plan, which is what I use, and it's going to be for a 36 month term. And I'll show you exactly what's gonna cost you here. Uh, if you do the shorter monthly terms here, like 12 months or 24 months, you're still gonna get a discount, but you're gonna be paying slightly more money. So it honestly depends on whether or not you guys are looking to sign up for one year versus three years. Uh, if you're looking to build a legitimate business here, you're probably gonna have it for more than three years. So I always do a three-year term when I make new hosting accounts for my blogs. And I also have every single blog that I create under a separate hosting account. That way, when I eventually sell the blog, um, I can literally just hand over those passwords and I'm not gonna have to like transfer a domain and go through that whole process. So for me, every single different blog that I operate is under a separate hosting platform, which if you're building blogs to sell them like I do, um, I would certainly recommend that. But anyway, we're gonna go with this right here. We're gonna go with this, which is the 295 per month basic plan. It comes with pretty much everything you're gonna need here. I can't think of anything that you're not going to need that's offered elsewhere just to get started. I mean, to be honest with you guys, they have a lot of bells and whistles here, but I don't use any of this stuff. I don't use Office 365, uh, different things like that. Domain privacy, I actually do pay for that separately. But honestly, for the most part, you'll be fine with this basic plan right here. That's what I use. So you're going to hit select. And now you're going to pretty much decide what you're going to be using for a domain name. Now, if you already have a domain name, you can go ahead and fill that out over here and essentially start the process of porting that domain and moving it. So for example, I have a couple of domains that are hosted on Google domains that I simply ported over to Bluehost. But the good news is with this plan, you get a free domain anyway. And so if you're starting off this blog from scratch, you're going to need a name. Now, obviously you're gonna wanna have a general idea of what type of website you're going to be creating as far as the niche goes. And so for me, for example, investing simple is in the finance space and then farmland riches. My other blog is related to farmland investing. And what you'll notice about both of those names is that they're both short and they're both two words. Um, I don't recommend three word um, domains. They're too long. In my opinion, the shorter, the better, and it should be pretty memorable. So you might have to get creative here when it comes to picking your domain name. And uh, so for this example here, uh, I'm going to pretend I'm creating a website about rowing because I've become really into rowing in the last couple of weeks here. I got a rowing machine. I've actually lost a lot of weight and been just rowing like every single day, like a 5k. I'm obsessed with it. It's a lot of fun. So let's say, for example, I'm making a website about rowing. So let's just start thinking off the top of my head and try to come up with some good two, per, uh, two word names. So right off the bat, let's go ahead and just type in rowing. That's like the main thing we want in the domain. And then we're going to follow that up with a secondary word. And hopefully that domain is available. And surprisingly, rowingbasics.com is available. I'm actually shocked by that because that's a pretty good name there. So Google Domains is actually where I keep a lot of my domains, um, unless the domain is hosted on a web host, um, which will be the case here with Bluehost. But I actually like this better because they give you better suggestions here when you're looking for a domain. So let's say I'm just going to type in rowing and just search get it and see what it shows me. Basically, what Google is going to do here is they're going to give me ideas for what's available because they're going to populate these ideas right here. So there's a lot of different um, extensions available like .com, .net, .org. I specifically use .com. I don't mess around with .net or .org. If you're building a business, get the .com. All right. People are going to want that. And I would never recommend paying a lot of money for a domain. Um, with investingsimple.com, we actually did pay a lot for that domain. It was like $5,000, but that was a very lucrative name. And, and that's not something that you're going to be able to just get uh, cheaply because it's a short name and it's got really good search terms in there. And believe it or not, the term investing simple is actually something people search in Google. So it ranks for that by default. Um, anyway, if you type in rowing, it gives you some good um, options here. And I think you can pick .com um, or if you go to all endings here, it'll show you what's available. Um, but it, it kind of shows you like the different things that you could be choosing from. And it might give you some ideas 
Um, so for example, um, I don't know if I can pick .com. You can't specifically search for .com, but anyways, it does give you some options like roamingteam.com. That's 3,900 bucks. I, I would never spend that much on a domain, rowingboat.com. But you might scroll through here and find that it puts some words in there where you're like, hey, wait a second. You know, this is a pretty good domain name. Uh, rowingmachinesale.com, that's, that's not really, you know, helpful to us. But you may find that the information over here is more helpful. Uh, let's try typing in like rowing machine and see what other domains are available. Uh, definitely looking for .com. So rowingmachinesale.com, we saw that earlier. Use rowingmachine.com. That's, that's actually not a bad one. I know it's three words, but use is pretty short. So that might be a possibility if I couldn't find a good domain. Um, but yeah, you just might want to check here, uh, sportrowingmachine.com. That's also not a bad name, to be honest with you guys. Rowingsetup.com. I actually like this one a lot too. It could be all about setting up your at-home rowing machine. Um, so there you go. There's a couple of options, but I'm going to go ahead and use rowingbasics.com as my example. So at this point, you would fill in your first name, last name, address, etc., email, and this is going to cover the different pricing. So if you change your mind about your package, uh, you can change that here, but I would definitely recommend the 36 month pricing for $295 a month to get you the best possible price. But now we got to talk about some of the extras here because I want to talk about what is and isn't necessary, okay? Uh, and this simply comes from what I do and do not use myself. So I, other people may have different opinions, but this is what I do for my websites and I've been doing this for many years, okay? Domain privacy and protection, in my opinion, that is well worth the $12 per year. Otherwise, people are going to be able to look up your information on public databases and get your email, maybe even your address and phone number. And what happens is when you sign up for a website domain name and you don't protect your information, you're going to start getting a lot of spam emails and spam phone calls from people looking to help you with your new website. It's a pain in the butt. Not a huge fan of it myself, so I do the domain privacy protection. Code Guard Basic. I have no idea what this is. I don't use it. I uncheck the box, leave all these unchecked. And then Site Lock Security Essential. I also do not use that. Literally, the only thing I use is the domain privacy protection. So if you include that for 99 cents per month, you're looking at a total here of about $118 to get this business off the ground for the next three years. And other than that, everything else I'm gonna show you is free. So that's pretty much your only out-of-pocket cost. Um, at this point, you can drop your credit card number, your code expiration, you're gonna check the box here, and then you're going to submit, and then you're going to be ready for the next step. I already have a Bluehost account, so I'm not gonna do this, but I will go ahead and log in now and show you more of the process. So I just activated this domain here. I thought about it for a little bit and I said, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and lock that down on the off chance I ever decide to do a rowing website because rowingbasics.com, I like the name of it and I wanna hold on to that. So I locked that down and I also bought the privacy protection on that domain for uh, the 99 cents per month. That way I'm not getting bombarded with phone calls and emails. So now I'm gonna go ahead and log in and I'm gonna show you what this dashboard actually looks like. And then we're gonna cover how to install WordPress very easily on this blog. So here's what I like about Bluehost is they're so user friendly that even if you didn't watch this video and you didn't know how to set things up, um, you know, they still have a lot of tools available to help you where you can follow step by step instructions on things you're looking to do. But the good thing is you got me here. I'm going to show you how I do this. So we're going to go ahead and skip this step altogether. Uh, what we're looking to build, we'll go ahead and just tell them we're building a blog. Are you comfortable with creating websites? I'm gonna say we're pretty comfortable building websites. And um, as far as the type and stuff here goes, I'm gonna just skip this because that's not necessarily what we need. Um, this is gonna give you basically uh, different pages they're going to install on your website. So they're going to install a blog, which is super helpful, but we don't need a store. We're not gonna sell anything. And as far as the about me goes, I'm just gonna show you how to do that manually. So for now, we'll just let them add the blog. Um, and this is helpful here too, because 
You can edit this manually at the end, but I'll show you how to do it right here just because this is pretty helpful. This is going to allow you to change the name of your site as well as the tagline. And just to show you an example here, I wanna open up Farmland Riches just so you guys can see what my name is and my tagline. So as you can see, my name is simply Farmland Riches and my tagline is your number one resource for farmland investing. Pretty simple nothing crazy but you want to have a similar name and tagline that is relevant to your site so for me uh i'm going to name the site rowing basics which is the same as the domain i actually like that name and uh i'm just going to do something similar here your number one resource i'm going to say your number one resource for rowing machines because i um, am going to be specifically talking about rowing machines on this blog i'll probably review them if i were to actually do this blog so the name on the site is Rowing Basics and the tagline is your number one resource for rowing machines. That looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Um, at this point, it's looking to get us to pick a theme and I use the Astra theme. It's free and it's going to install this theme for us. So just go ahead and click on Astra and then we're going to continue. Here we are now inside of the Bluehost dashboard and to be honest with you guys, they have a really helpful guide here that will help you through these different steps of getting started, like writing your first blog post, setting up categories, putting in images, logos, or other media. You may choose to follow some of these steps on your own because I will be honest, the one area that I don't have a ton of information for you is website design. Uh, and by that, I mean the visual look of your website. So real quick, I wanna jump over to Farmland Riches and just look at it a little bit more and show you guys what my website looks like. Uh, it's really basic, not a heck of a lot going on here. Um, you can set this little icon up here yourself. I'm gonna show you at some point how to do that, but I'm sure in this portal here, that would be under this section right here, learning about visuals, and they have tutorials for that. So if you find that what I'm showing you is too far over your head, or if you miss something, there's a lot of great resources in the Bluehost dashboard or portal there. But when we're talking about the design of a website, we're talking about things like this, the grass background, the logo up here, which I literally just made in Photoshop. Um, and we're also talking about this right here, which is the look of the images on the site. Um, and I will go ahead now and I'm going to click on one of the articles just so you can see what that looks like. Uh, I made a really simple template in Photoshop where I basically just created this little farmlandriches.com. I made a green border and then you just plop the logo in there of whatever you're reviewing. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this looks ugly, it's not that good. So I think if you do a little bit of research on your own about some graphic design and creating featured images, I think you can do a lot better of a job than me here. I made this template in about two minutes and then I made all the featured images for every article on my site. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it is uh, nothing glamorous. I mean, some of these are just text. Uh, not that great, but I guess it's good because it shows you you don't need to have anything spectacular for this to work. This website actually makes money, and I'm going to prove it to you guys in a little bit here when we take a look at the actual affiliate dashboards. But when we're talking about the design, that's basically what we're talking about here is things like this. Um, I'm going to show you how to make these tables in a little bit here as well. And adding images, that's a piece of cake as well. But the main thing you're going to want to design is your homepage. And it's really quite simple to make something that looks about like this. And we're going to cover some of those basics um, as we go through the rest of the tutorial. So the way that Bluehost is set up by default, you're going to basically get into the backend WordPress section of your website through their website. And you don't have to keep it this way if you don't want to, but it really doesn't hurt you in the long run because um, you're pretty much accomplishing the same exact thing. So what you do is you click on this button here called log into WordPress, and then Bluehost is going to connect you securely into your backend WordPress website. Uh, with some of the other web hosts, you're going to just go to the website itself and go to a specific page to log in. But with Bluehost, this is the way that that process works. Um, and the next thing I want to do here is actually uninstall some of the bloatware that comes 
comes on your WordPress website to begin with. Uh, and that's just software that you really don't need that's just taking up space for no reason. Bluehost does install their own plugin here, which shows you step by step how to build your website. Um, I don't need this and I don't use this because I already know what I'm doing, but you may want to use this yourself uh, because there is a lot of good stuff here that may be used in your website, especially when it comes to designing it. But again, I'm going to show you how I designed my website with Astra, which is a free theme, and you're not going to have to spend any more money on some kind of premium theme. So now what I want to do is go down here to plugins and see what's already been installed on our blog. And uh, as we can see here, if we scroll down here to active, we can see there is a good amount of bloatware, which has been installed here that I personally am not going to use this stuff, but you know, you guys may decide that you want to. Um, I'm going to deactivate and uninstall quite a bit of this here. Um, the anti-spam, don't use it. So I'm actually going to delete this. One of the things that I do, I disable comments on my website. Um, that helps me cut down on spam because people can't leave spam comments if there's no way to comment. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this right off the bat. Bluehost, I'm going to leave this on here. This is the plugin which links your Bluehost dashboard and allows you to uh, go over here and collect, connect directly through your Bluehost portal. So I'm going to leave that, but if you want to, you can remove that and just log into your WordPress website through your website rather than going through your web host. Um, constant contact, this we definitely don't need. I'm going to deactivate that. I use a different plugin for um, email opt-ins, which I will teach you later. So we deactivated it and I'm now going to delete it. Next up, Google Analytics for WordPress by Monster Insights. I don't use this, so I'm going to deactivate it and delete it. This one right here, I have literally never heard of this in my life. I don't know what this is, so I'm going to delete that. Next, we have Jetpack by WordPress. I don't use Jetpack either, so I'm going to deactivate that. I'm going to deactivate Optin Monster as well. Pretty much the only two plugins I'm going to leave myself here are WordPress Forms Lite and that default Bluehost plugin that allows you to follow these helpful steps here in setting up your website. Um, that being said, now let's go ahead and get to the next setup step. So I'm going to go ahead and follow what Bluehost has set up here for us with these steps for setting up the homepage and different things like that. So we'll start with this here. Let's start with your homepage. We're going to click the get started button and uh, we'll see what options we have. So what do you want people to see when they land on your site? Well, if we look at farmland riches here, my other blog, we're modeling this off of. They're brought to a static homepage where they have a link to the core articles down here, which is the different blog articles. And there's also a link to the free guide, which is an email opt-in, which I'm going to show you later. So that's what I recommend is setting up a static page for your homepage. So we'll go ahead and click on that now. And uh, we're going to create a page that we're simply calling home. So now we'll go ahead and update it and it's going to make that page for us right in the back end. So now we have ourselves a home page, and now we'll go ahead and follow step two, which is to start with a page or a post. So let's click add a page to our site. So by doing that, this made this sample page here for us, which is going to be something we don't actually use. Um, and we're actually going to change back to the traditional view here for the WordPress editor. I'm not a big fan of this. I think this is uh, harder to follow. What you're going to do, you're going to go back to this icon here, and it's going to bring you back to your back end of your website. Now we're going to go back here to plugins, and we're actually going to add a new plugin to bring us back to the classic editor. So what you're going to do is go up here, click on add new, and I'm going to have you install a couple of different plugins right now that you may need. First of all, the one we want right here, classic editor. We want that. Install this. Uh, if you don't see this right here, just go ahead and search for it. And then when you click activate, now we're going to have the classic editor when we're editing pages and posts. So that's the very first one. Click on add new again. And now we're going to add another plugin called pretty links, which I'll show you how to use shortly. Uh, for now, we're just installing it that way. It's ready for us when we need it. So um, let's go ahead and find that. Uh, for some reason, that didn't pop up. So let me see here. Uh, looks like I had to put the space in there for some reason, but this is it right here. Pretty links, link management. Go ahead and install that now. And then we're going to click activate. 
And then the only other plugin that I want to install for now is called Ninja Tables. We're going to go ahead and do that now. And this right here is Ninja Tables, so we're going to install that and activate this on our website. Now, I use the pro version of both Ninja Tables and Pretty Links. You don't have to. I will show you how to get away with the free plan, but I'm also going to show you some of the features available with the pro plans uh, that you may decide to use down the road. And honestly, guys, I'm a big fan of starting small and scaling up over time. So honestly, start with the free plans, and then once your site is making money, maybe that's a good time to reinvest some of those profits and upgrade to some of the pro plans that really don't cost that much. But for now, this is what we want. We want to have Bluehost installed, the classic editor activated, Ninja Tables, Pretty Links, and WordPress Forms Lite. Now, when we go back to Pages and take a look at that page that we just created, uh, it's going to look a lot different. And here we are with the old school look uh, I think it's a lot easier to work with, and so that we're going to use. So I actually switched over to the uh, back end of my Farmland Riches website since we have more going on here rather than just that static basic website because I want to show you guys what different visual elements you have control over because this to me is a lot more helpful than simply looking at an empty website with no content. So I'm going to show you some of the basics here. This is the one area where you may need to do a little bit of research above and beyond this video is the overall design aspects of your website. Uh, first of all, in this mode down here, you have different selections here looking at desktop and then a tablet version of your website and then a mobile version. And this will allow you to see what your website looks like in these different formats. So let's start off here looking at desktop and just go through some of this information. So under the global menu, this is going to allow you to change colors and fonts on your website. If we click on typography, we can see my base typography is this one right here. It's the Montserrat size 16. And if I change that, it would change the font across my website. And then under the headings category here, this is going to be related to headers on your blog articles themselves. So if we jump over to my article here on uh, Acre Trader versus Farm Together, this is going to be relevant to headers, which is something like this. Uh, like So this, for example, is an H2. And then I also use throughout here some H3s and smaller headings as well. Uh, so that is essentially going to change things like this. Outside of typography, we have colors. This is where you're setting your base colors for your website, like your text color, uh, link color, link hover color, different things like that. Uh, these things you can change later on when you are tweaking the design of your website. So under site identity, this is where you're changing things like your site logo, as well as your icon, which you're going to have to make at some point. Um, or you can go on Fiverr and if you want to invest a little bit of money, you can have some logos made. I made all this myself. I'm pretty handy with Photoshop. So watch a couple of Photoshop tutorials and make up a logo here as well as an icon for your website, which you can upload. Site title we set earlier. Uh, this is where you could change that right here is with site title and then my tagline, which we already saw. That's everything under site identity. The next thing I want to talk about is menus, which is actually pretty important because your menu is going to be um, your site navigation, uh, which let me get back into that section here because this moved me. But if we go back into menus, that's going to be your site navigation up top. And I have main menu by default, and that's essentially what you have here. So if we take a look at the menu setup for my website, and I'm going to just open it up in a separate tab just so we're not being confused. This is the menu up here is these different options that we have available to us. And I put all these in myself. So we have my homepage, which is what you're looking at now. We have my beginner's guide to farmland investing, which is my main article on this website that brings in the majority of the traffic. We also have a option here for platform reviews, which has this nice drop down where I can pick and choose different articles to read. And if you click on one of these, it's going to bring you over to that specific review. Under guides, I have the different guides that I've written here that I'll drop down. 
And then under comparisons, I only have one comparison content that I've written so far. And then there's contact us, which is where you can contact the owner of the website. Um, that is probably something you're going to work on down the road when you actually have content. But that is all being controlled over here in the menu section where you have main menus and then you have sub menus where you can create these drop downs. Um, this is pretty easy to put together here, guys. You just click and drag these things left and right. So for example, right now I have Acre Trader versus Farm together as a drop down under comparisons. But if I click on this and drag it back to the left, uh, and separate it. Now it's going to show up up top as a separate menu item. But if I want, I just drag it over to the right and it becomes a drop down as part of the comparisons. So that's how you set up those menus with the drop downs. And I think that looks pretty nice to me. All right, guys. So it's another day here in the process of us building this website from scratch. And as you can tell, I've done a couple of different things here to kind of dress up the site a little bit. But don't worry. I'm going to go through and show you guys how I did everything that you see here. And so basically what I've done since we last talked and since I finished the last part of the video, I added this little tagline here up top and I added some header um, menus here. That way it can go to different parts of the website. And I made some blank pages for some different things that you may need on your website. And I'll show you exactly how I did that. I also started this home page here with a uh, stock image of a woman on a rowing machine and I added the text here best home rowing machines 2021 and as far as the home page goes um, you can kind of decide what you want to do with it if we go over to farmland riches it's very basic it just has this image here of some farmland and then it has the transparent header and then you have a button to go to the articles or it leads to the lead magnet here where they can drop their email and download this free guide and then down below it simply has this auto populated section with different categories for articles and this is all really easy to set up guys the only issue is um, i don't have any real articles for rowingbasics.com and i don't plan on creating any because it's just a dummy website for now um, maybe down the road i'll actually do something with it but for the time being um, it is strictly for demonstration purposes but this is where we're at right now with this site. And these are just some names of some popular rowers. I didn't actually write these articles. I just wanted to use this as an example because let's say you actually made this blog. Um, while this may not look pretty, you could probably get away with what we have right here as your homepage. Um, what we're looking to create here is what many call the MVP or the minimum viable product because you can always expand on this and make it bigger and better but what we're trying to do early on is make the simplest website that is able to get traffic and hopefully make some money. And if you're unclear on how you would actually monetize this blog, I want to go ahead and cover that quickly now. But later on, we're going to go into much more detail. Essentially, what you would be doing is earning a commission every time somebody purchases a rowing machine. So for example, I have some rowing machine reviews here, and this doesn't actually go to a link. It just goes to a blank page on the website, as you'll see here, where there's literally nothing here. But if this was a real blog, I would include some links to my rowing machine reviews, and then I would write reviews about these rowing machines, or what I would really do is hire somebody to write those articles, which is what I did over here with Farmland Riches. Um, and then basically, let's say somebody's reading Concept 2 Rower Review and they say, hey, this was a great review. I'm going to go ahead and buy that rower. Well, basically, they would just click that link. And um, if they clicked it and made the purchase, you might earn a commission. So, for example, if we just go to Google here, and we when we type in like best home rowing machines, you're going to see that a couple of sites are doing this already. So menshealth.com has this article here called the 18 best indoor rowing machines for your home gym. And if you scroll down here and take a look, well, if you find one that you like, for example, the Nordic track RW 900 rower, they have a button right here called shop now. And if we click this link, as you can see, this is an Amazon affiliate link. So if we actually made this purchase, um, they would make a commission. And just to prove that to you right here, look at this right here. We see tag men's health. So we know that this is in fact an affiliate link. And if somebody clicks over from that website and makes a purchase, 
you would earn a commission in the process. Now, I don't personally monetize my blogs with Amazon affiliate links as the main revenue source because I find you can make a lot more money by establishing relationships directly with the company. So what I would do is I would reach out to Nordic Track independently and say, hey, do you have a separate affiliate program where I can refer sales right to your website and earn a commission in the process? But that's a very basic understanding of how you would make money is you write articles like this or individual reviews of different things like this. So if I look up like Nordic Track, um, RW900, and then review. We'll see who has a review of this. And it's uh, PC Magazine, which is kind of strange to be honest with you guys. I would expect there to be uh, something different because uh, that's not really what you would expect as far as somebody who makes a, a review of a rower. But anyway, let's check out this one right here. It's called uh, waterrowingmachine.com and they have a review. So there we go. This is a perfect example of uh, what we're trying to build here. This is an affiliate blog. I have no idea if it's making a ton of money or a little bit, but it's a very basic blog and it's similar to like what I would be building here. So basically this person has written a review of this uh, rower and by the looks of it, it's a pretty comprehensive review, but you would be ultimately making this type of content yourself or hiring somebody to do that. And again, the whole point is to get people to click this button right here, which is an affiliate link. And then this person is able to make commission on that sale. So back to our website, um, let's go back under the hood and talk about a couple of these tweaks I made to our site that you can follow along with now as you're building your site. And then eventually we can get into the fun stuff such as mapping out content and uh, monetizing the actual blog. The first thing I want to cover is the SSL certificate and it looks like it was activated by default using Bluehost. So once the domain uh, is officially registered, it looks like it already activated the SSL certificate because if we click here, it shows that there is a SSL certificate through Cloudflare and this is what you get for free because you used um, Bluehost. But just to show that to you guys, let's go to bluehost.com and log back in and I'll show you where you would go to turn on or turn off that SSL certificate. And again, all this does is shows somebody visiting your website that the information there is secure and uh, it allows them to trust the website versus getting a uh, notification that the website is not secure. But what you would do is go over here to my sites and then you're gonna go ahead and click on manage site. Then you're gonna go over here to security and under security, we can see SSL certificate. Let's encrypt and it's already turned on. If this is already on, you don't have to do anything. If it's off, simply turn it on and that is going to take care of the SSL certificate. Now I'm gonna show you how to set up your permalink structure and if you don't know what that means, don't worry guys, I'm gonna show you right now. So over here on Farmland Riches, we're using the permalink structure that I recommend, which is simply putting the post name immediately after the slash on your website. So what I mean by this is some websites actually include like dates here or categories or different information. Like for example, maybe it would include today's date. So what if it was like 01 slash 01 slash 20 slash uh, acre trader review. This, this, this could be a uh, permalink if you don't change this setting. And the problem is you have a really long and crowded link for no reason. And um, it actually could hurt your SEO because you want basically whatever is included here after the slash to be relevant to the keyword that you're looking to rank for. So for example, slash acre trader dash review brings me to the acre trader review on my website. So basically, I just wanna make sure there's not any random gibberish in here before that slash, and it gives you nice clean link structure on the site. Uh, so how you do that, we're gonna to go to the actual website itself and start over there, and uh, it's gonna take you about 30 seconds. So really easy tweak here. You're gonna to wanna to go into your backend WordPress dashboard. Once you get here, you're gonna go down here to settings and then permalinks, and you simply want to make sure you've checked the box for post name, which by default is simply going to include the name of your post 
as your article and you want to put a dash in there uh, if there's going to be a space. So that's your next step. Uh, so for example, if we go over here to my posts, I made this fake post called best home rowing machines. If we click on it, I've set my permalink to rowingbasics.com slash best home rowing machines, which might be a keyword I was going after. Um, you can change it by clicking the edit icon, but once you've published the article, don't change this permalink without doing a redirect, but I'll show you how to do that later, just in case you do decide to make that change. So for example, if I decided I wanted to get rid of the home and just make it best rowing machines, I would simply do that. Uh, since I've already made this article on my site, I don't actually want to make that change since this is a published article. So I'm going to leave it as best home rowing machines, but you pretty much just want to include your keywords here when you do an article. So for example, if I was doing a review of the concept to rower, um, let me go ahead and add a new post and I'll show you what I would do. I would simply do this right here. I'd go concept to rower review 2021. And then I would do best rower question mark. I would just do something like this. And then if I click save draft, it's going to give me a really long permalink here, which is pretty much the entire uh, sentence I've just written up there. So we don't want it to be this long because at that point, Google is not going to look at all this information. And it's just simply way too long. So what I would do is just get rid of some of the stuff at the end. And you also do not want to include any numbers or dates in your permalinks because when 2022 rolls around, you don't want to have to do all these crazy redirects for the new year. So I always leave the year in my article titles, but I don't put it in the permalink. So I would simply backspace this out and then I would click OK. And then after I write this article, in order to find it on the website, you would just go to rowingbasics.com slash concept dash two dash rower dash review. And that is an SEO friendly permalink that is nice and organized. So that is how you want to set up permalinks on your site. And the same thing goes with pages, uh, which I'm going to show you now. So uh, before I get into that, let me just show you what I'm talking about by looking at farmland riches, because there's a couple of pages that you may decide to include on your website. Um, just because you typically find these on all other blogs. So we already have the home page, which is just this really basic uh, image that I put together. But I'm going to show you how I did it in a little bit. And we're actually going to spice up this design to make it a little bit more visually appealing. Uh, but anyway, going back here to farmland riches, you'll see in my header menu, we have the home page. We have the link to my main article. We have platform reviews in my drop down. We have guides, comparisons, and then we have a contact us page. So let me show you that right now. Something you probably want to set up uh, that way people can get a hold of you. Uh, if you click on contact us, first of all, pay attention to my permalink structure. You see it's just farmlandriches.com slash contact dash us. Nice and clean. Um, I keep it super simple, guys. I just made this page that says for all inquiries, please email farmlandriches at gmail.com. That's it. All right. Uh, and if you want to see how I would do that, if I go over here to rowingbasics.com, uh, go back into my dashboard, go over here to pages, and then I made the page called contact, but if you don't have this already, just click add new and then call it contact. Uh, so you would literally just put contact. Uh, I don't need this because I already have it. So let me go back here to pages and it shouldn't save because I didn't save anything. So that's how you'd make that. So if you go in here to contact, this is where you would edit what is on this page. So for example, you can see this, this page is rowingbasics.com slash contact. And then I would say something similar here. So I, I mean, you can literally just copy this if you want to, and then paste it in here and then just change the email. So let's just pretend I have, well, we want to get rid of this bullet point here. Uh, we, let's say we, ha we have rowingbasics at gmail.com, which I don't own that Gmail. So if anybody, steals it and tries to email you with that email. It's, it's not me. So I don't know who that is probably a scammer. But anyway, I have now made that the text on this page. And uh, next thing I want to do is just show you what that looks like. So if we go back to rowingbasics.com, I've already added the contact page up here in the header menu, um, which I've shown you how to do earlier. Uh, just for a quick recap, in case that is something that's confusing you. Um, I will show you at the end after we get into these pages here, because those are also very important. But now if you go over to the contact page, you have a very similar looking text here. 
Um, you could probably dress it up a little bit and mess with the spacing if you wanted to have less spacing here. You could also change these fonts if you wanted to, but I don't really care about that because at the end of the day, someone isn't going to be on your website and say, oh, I don't want to read this because of the font. Um, I I'm not a huge design person. As you can tell from this blog, it's really very, very basic, but I just want to reiterate the fact here that even though this doesn't look that good, it makes money. People read these articles like they're not here for all this. They're here for the information, you know, and at a certain point you can get more detailed with design. But when you start out, guys, I would just keep it simple. You know, this works and this is making money and it's basic and boring, but it works and gets the job done. So anyway, that's how I made this little contact page. Uh, for the about page, you just make the page and I'm not actually going to fill anything here uh, because I don't even have an about page for farmland riches. I don't even have that page because it's just like, to me, not, I don't feel it's necessary. Uh, it wasn't really worth it in the beginning to make that page. It wasn't going to be a, a revenue driver for me. So I just figured I'll skip that. Um, going back here though, we do need to talk about these pages that I put in the footer, which is your site disclaimer, terms of use and privacy policy. Now this gets into something a little bit complicated because you do need to have these on any website out there, especially if you are collecting user data, such as the email opt-in, which I am doing with my site. Um, so down here in the footer, which is the bottom of the website, just to show you guys, this is the footer and the very top is the header. And then you have the sidebars, left and right sidebar, just so you have some terminology here. Down here in the footer, you can see I have links to disclaimer, terms of use, and privacy policy. So if we go to my disclaimer, you're going to see it brings you to this nice disclaimer that mentions my company, which is Scribner Media LLC. Um, and this gives all of my disclaimers here. I have an affiliate disclosure, Amazon affiliate disclaimer, sponsored posts, fair use. And if you're wondering if I hired a lawyer, no, I didn't. I paid for a service and I'm going to show you that shortly. But I just want to show you what this looks like if you are curious what these things are. So I have a disclaimer. I have terms of use, which is a separate page and also includes a bunch of random information. To be honest with you, I don't even know what two thirds of this is. And then I have privacy policy. All that I know is this is what helps you operate a legitimate business and it helps you to avoid uh, any potential lawsuits. And it's not, I'm not saying it's going to you know, mean, mean you don't get sued. I mean, there's always the possibility of that. I think it's a minimal risk with what we're doing here with blogging. I've certainly never run into issues myself and I don't really know anybody who has, but I will tell you that you need to have this privacy policy, uh, terms of service or terms of use and disclaimer on your site. Now, is it the very first thing you need to do? Probably not. I would maybe focus on making some articles for your site and then maybe once you get traffic, you could set up these pages, but you don't want to have this be the last thing on your list and forget about it and then realize you're not following the rules with your site. The other only other disclaimer that I include site wide is a free plugin. I'll show it to you later. And that is merely my affiliate disclosure, which is required by the FTC. So pretty much all it does is before every article on my site, it includes this text right here, which says some of the links on this site are affiliate links. You could literally just type this in yourself if you want to, but I prefer using this plugin because it does it automatically. That way I know every single one of my articles site wide has the affiliate disclosure. So um, I, I made the pages. All right. And, and right now they don't go to anything. There's nothing on there. It just says disclaimer terms of use and privacy policy, um, you're going to want to add these to your site. Um, if you're making a legitimate business and you're investing a little bit of money right now, I will show you what service I used. But you, you know, um, you, you might want you might decide to do this down the road after your site gains some traction. I'm not saying you have to dump a bunch of money into this right now. But anyways, I have a link down below for the service that I use. To be fully transparent, I am affiliated with this company. It's called plugandlaw.com, and it's pretty much a plug and play uh, process for getting your disclaimer, terms of use, and privacy policy. So uh, it, it doesn't cost very much. I'll show you guys the website now. If you do decide to use it, I would very much appreciate your use of my affiliate link, seeing as I'm taking uh, very valuable information that has made me tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands at this point, and I'm handing it to you for free. Because the thing is, this didn't happen overnight. I've been doing this for three years now, and I've learned a lot of this, and I'm giving you guys 
all the shortcuts here. So if you want to give back to me, please consider using those links down below. So anyway, this is plug and law. If we go over here to pricing, you can get your legal bundle for 97 bucks. It's not a heck of a lot of money, guys. It comes with your privacy policy, terms and conditions, and disclaimer. She also gives you a bonus trademark guide and bonus affiliate marketing legal guide, but that's really all you need right here is these three core documents. It's going to be tailored to your name uh, or your LLC if you have one, uh, and it's 97 bucks, and it helps you to rest easy. And honestly, guys, every single website has it. Even this one right here, pluginlaw.com, has terms and conditions as well as privacy policy. So you need this stuff on your website. Uh, and if you want to run a legitimate business, you should probably just do this now. But if you're looking to save some money, uh, you could have this be a later step in your process. But now what I want to show you guys is how I actually added those pages in the footer. Um, you're familiar with the process of making a new page because I showed you how to make that contact page. And uh, if you wanted to make this about page, you could too. Just to recap, guys, if you're uh, forgetting here, you just go here, click on pages, and then you would click the plus button or add new and you'd create a new page. Once you've made that page, now you may decide, okay, I want to put this in my header or footer. And in order to do that, you're going to go into menus. And I already made these menus, but I'm going to wipe them out and start from scratch just so you guys can see. Um, what this process looks like. So I just deleted my footer menu. It's gone forever. And I just deleted my main menu. So watch up here. This is going to disappear. So there goes my main menu. Um, it recreated a basic one up top where it's simply by default. It looks like it just listed every page from my website manually up top. But you, you might not want to have disclaimer, privacy policy, terms of use up top. I personally don't because 99.99% of people are never going to click on these. They're just there because it's required by law. Uh, but anyway, what you do here is go to create a new menu and then you're going to name the menu. So I'm just going to call this header and then I'm going to check the box because this is going to be my primary menu, which is up here. Then you click next and then you're going to add some items. So now we have this blank menu. Uh, with nothing up there. So now we add items and this is where you pick and choose what goes up there. So this would be my cornerstone piece. I would add that first and then I would do my about page and then I would do contact and that now shows up over here and you can literally just reorder them if you want to. Uh, so now you can see about is first and let me uh, just get this out of the way so you guys can see. So now we have about best drawing machines 2021 and contact. Uh, if you want to do the nesting thing, all you do is click and drag that forward. So now about becomes a drop down and best rowing machines is in that drop down. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just leave it like this where you have best rowing machines about and contact. Like I said, I personally wouldn't even do this about page myself because it's unnecessary and that doesn't really follow the MVP model of building a minimum viable product. But you may choose to add that if you decide to. Now for the footer menu. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go back here and create a new menu and I'm just going to call this one footer and then I'm going to say it's the footer menu and then click next and I'm going to scroll down so you can see the changes live. So right now in the footer there's no menus down here but if we go to add items we can add terms of use, disclaimer, privacy policy and then all of a sudden those guys are down there. Uh, let me hit publish to save my updates and then I will close this out. And now, just like that, we have created the header menu here with our key cornerstone article, which I'll explain what that means later, about and contact. And then down below, we have terms of use, disclaimer, privacy policy. At this point, it would be just up to you to go through plugin law or whoever you want to go through and have those documents written up. And then you would just paste them on those pages. And uh, I also recommend including a way for people to contact you at the bottom of those documents. So that's how you set up those pages, uh, adding them to your menus. And that's also how to um, make sure you have the correct uh, legal documents. That way your site is compliant. Okay, so now I want to go through a bit more detail here on how I dressed up this home page very slightly by adding this image. I also added the tagline here for the actual blog. And we're actually going to be making an icon for up here as well. Uh, so if you look over here on farmlandriches.com, uh, Facebook actually is a good example too. They have this little icon here. 
um, we're going to make one. So for farmland riches, it's this little piece of grass. Um, and for rowingbasics.com, it's this default of just this globe. But it is kind of cool to dress it up a little bit. And I'm going to show you how we do that. I'll also show you how I added the tagline here below this name and how I uploaded this image and how I made this little drop down here with some different links, which you could send to um, review articles on your website. So first of all, let's cover the image uh, just for some basics. So let me go back here to edit page and I've already uploaded this image and compressed it, which is very important, but I have a whole section planned for the end talking about image compression. So don't worry about that too much right now, um, but I'm just gonna show you the steps so you are familiar. If we were to remove this image, um, and I'm gonna just get rid of all of this here too, like we're gonna start from a completely scratch homepage, all right? So if I click update, and then I go back to my homepage of rowingbasics.com, well, now I have nothing. I'm back to zero. You know, I've got nothing here, okay? So the first thing, if you want to have that image back, is you go here to add media. Now, I've already uploaded this image myself, so I'm not going to re-upload the file because later you're going to see this process and we're going to talk about filling out these different areas here. And we're going to talk most importantly about this file size, which is very important because we compressed it to make sure it's as small as possible. For now, I'm just going to click insert into post. And the main thing is I want to make it full size since this is the home page. So insert into post and there is our rowing lady once again. So now if I click update and we go back to my home page, all that we've done is simply get back this image of a woman utilizing this rowing machine. And if for some reason you wanted to change this text right here, all you would do is change this and it's going to update that. So let's say, for example, you didn't want to have 2021 in there. Well, take it out, click update. And then if I refresh this, now it just says best home rowing machines. So you could really make that say whatever you wanted to. So after this, now we're going to make a subsection, assuming this is the home page. So what you do with your home page is kind of up to you. Like I said, over on Farmland Riches, I just use this very basic format of having just um, the start here and the free guide and then latest articles. This is really basic, but just to do a different blog, like let's just go to uh, Listen Money Matters. That's a blog that I'm familiar with and I haven't looked at it in like six months, so let's just jump on their homepage. Um, theirs is pretty simple too, actually. They just have um, your header menu, or, which you're familiar with now with their different pages. They also have the email drop here, which is uh, going to be something I'm going to show you how we do that later, uh, who they're featured in, and then just some different things here about their podcast. And it's just kind of like a get started piece here that shows you the different ways you could go. And it points to some of their best guides on their website with uh, some fancy looking links and buttons. Then they have some reviews of their um, affiliates and then down below the menu. So this is actually a really simple website. I'm a big fan of this and this would be very easy to create on your own. Um, and you can see here they have their own icon too up top and they have a little logo here, which um, I'll show you how to create that if you want to use something different than uh, just the basic text name of your site. Whereas on rowingbasics.com, you can see it's literally just text. But if we look at Farmland Riches, I actually made a very basic logo uh, and that's why it looks like this is bolded and this is not. So I'll show you how we did that in a little bit here. But um, this is basically one version of a homepage. This didn't happen overnight. This blog's been around for probably the better part of 10 years is my guess. Um, so you're not going to get something that looks this good from start, but just look around and get some ideas. Um, if I was doing something really basic, like I said, what I would do is under this image, I would just link to my top reviews. So you could literally just write down rowing machine reviews. Uh, and then at that point, you would go underneath and start a bulleted list. Now, there is one thing we're forgetting here, and that I'm going to show you in a second. But for now, let's just pretend these are links to my different rowing reviews that I've already written on my site. I don't have any real reviews. So uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. This is as if you have written these articles already. You would write the name of your review, select it, click on the link icon. You always want to click the gear here and open in a new tab. Every single link on your website. Uh, it's going to help with your bounce rate. So always open link in a new tab. 
And let's say, for example, this article, best home rowing machines, was this review. So we're going to add link. We're going to do the same thing for these. We're going to pretend these are all different reviews when in reality it's, it's not. But we're just doing it for the show here just so you guys know uh, what we're doing for demonstration. So if I click update now and we go back to the blog, you're going to notice that we're not quite there yet in terms of where we were earlier, okay? Because you'll see best home rowing machines up top, but then rowing machines reviews, well, that text is really small. And, and, and if you weren't looking, you might miss it. So how do I get this text down here to look big like this text right here? Well, that is very simple. And it comes to this drop down menu right here where you can choose paragraph headings, uh, and pretty much guys, all I use is paragraph and then H1 through H3. Very rarely do I use H4. So let me explain now. If I was down here, I would make this an H2. I never use another H1 on a page because this becomes your H1. So just so you're aware, when using headers, um, and I'll explain what headers do in a minute, but you wouldn't make this an H1. That's because you already have an H1 up here, so you'd make that an H2. That's the biggest you ever start with, all right? Now if I click update, and I go over here and I refresh, you're gonna see that this is nice and big now, okay? But this is just one way to do headers, because that is just header two. You could also utilize header three or header four, and basically you wanna think of this as a system of, um, breaking things down into more specific um, parent and then child categories. So for example, let me just make one down here because this will make more sense. So let's say our main category was uh, types of food. Okay, this is the main parent category. I would make this an H2. All right. And then in that, let's say I was going to cover different types of food. Let's say I wanted to do American food. And then I wanted to do um, Spanish food, okay? And then I wanted to do Chinese food, all right? These I would actually make an H3 because they still fall under the category here of types of food, okay? So like, let's say under types of food, I was gonna say here are the different types of foods that I like. Just so there's uh, more text here on the screen, American foods. And then if I said, my favorite American foods in order. All right, this is where now you could go into more detail, like the burger, all right? I don't even know if that's American. Uh, French fries, let's say that's another one, and let's say um, salad, all right? I don't know, I don't know who, makes, who, who these foods belong to, but anyway, you could now make these an H4 because they're all related to the, the category above it. So let me actually get rid of these just for um, organization's sake. So H2 would be types of food. And under that, you have American food. That would be your H3 because it still fits under types of food. And then if you have specific American foods you want to talk about, those would sit under an H4. Um, so we're going to talk about this more when we get into content, but I just wanted to give you a uh, explanation of headers right now. A and the point is now when I update that and I refresh this, uh, it just makes things more organized for the reader. So your H1 is always going to be your biggest text, okay? This is your H1. This is your H2. This is another H2. This is your H3. This is your H4. Beyond that, I don't use H5 or H6, but you might decide to uh, if you want to organize things differently. But that is how you would keep everything organized. Uh, and that's how I'm slowly building my homepage, all right? I would just include links to my main reviews. And what I would basically do with this homepage is I would just make this a, um, a uh, almost like a choose your own adventure, okay, on your website, where you point to the different resources available on your site and simply give people an easy means of navigation and also understanding what your website is about. Um, so that's how I did the image. That's how I did these headers and these links and uh, the different reviews. Now let me get into more details about how I added this tagline and let's actually make a logo for this website. That way it's not so boring. All right, so let's cover a couple of more design aspects here for the website. We're gonna make a logo up here and I'm gonna show you how I got this tagline to show up. And we're gonna also make a new icon so that way we don't have this boring globe up top. Uh, of course, we go to customize to get started. And next we're going to click on um, the header menu. And then we go over here to site identity, all right? 
And as you can see in here, we have a couple of different options. We have a uh, site logo we can upload, a site icon, and we already have the site title, all right? Um, all I did to show this tagline is this box right here. You check a box that says display site tagline. When I uncheck that, no more tagline. When I check it, uh, we get our site tagline. So if you want to have that show up, that's that easy. Um, display site title. If you don't want your titles displayed, you can uncheck that and I would get rid of it. And uh, that's pretty much the main options here. But what we want to do now is create a logo and create an icon in order to replace this and replace that. Uh, I have a Photoshop subscription. I'm going to show you how to do this on Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, uh, you look up a Canva tutorial or there's free alternatives, but this is what I use. So I'm just going to show you that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and make a new project here in uh, Photoshop. We're just going to make this a width of 250 and a height of 100 pixels with a uh, transparent background since it is a logo after all. And then we just click on create and uh, we're going to make sure our logo fits within this boundary here and i'm pretty lazy when it comes to logos guys i don't i don't really do anything fancy okay so i'm just going to make something really simple here using text and i'm just going to follow what i did with farmland riches and i'm just going to make half of it bold and then we have to get this down to a smaller size just so we can see what we're doing and then all i did is i took half of my word and i just made half of this uh bold rather than making it regular font right here. So if I go here and I just make that bold, now we have uh, the rowing, which is bold, and the basics, which is not. Um, pretty lazy, but that's pretty much all I'm going to do here. And then I'm just going to make it black uh, because I want to um, just keep the site super simple. So I would change that color up here, and you just drag it down here and make this black. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could also make it red or dress it up however you want to. But I'm going to keep it super simple, and uh, we're going to go with this as our logo. So let me go ahead and save that as a uh, PNG to make sure I maintain the transparent background. So we'll just call this site logo and go down here to PNG. And this should be a pretty small file size. Um, if I click save, it should give me some options. And uh, I'll see how this ended up coming up, uh, what it came out file size wise, but it should be pretty small. So now if I go here and I select a logo, I'm going to upload this file, go to select files and uh, site logo. Yeah, this is only four kilobytes. So that's, that's very small. That's totally fine. Doesn't need to be compressed. And then I would just have my site title be site logo and then I would just type in this here logo for website I'm gonna explain what this alt text is later on and now we just have to crop it so we want to get rid of some of that white space so it really doesn't matter what resolution you start with because you're gonna crop it anyway um, go ahead and crop the image and then we now will see this being replaced so now we have duplicates and in order to get rid of that that's pretty easy you just go here and uncheck display site title so now if you wanted to you could leave it with rowing basics your number one resource for rowing machines or you could simply get rid of that tagline altogether and just display rowing basics uh, you can make your logo wider by doing this or smaller by adjusting that if you want to have a bigger versus smaller logo on your website you can just adjust it so you know you don't have to necessarily change the size in Photoshop you can build it and then just adjust it here so that's very basic instructions on how to make a website logo this is not very good but uh, that's all I did for farmland riches too is I literally just typed it out in Photoshop and then I just made farmland bold and it's a really basic looking website but if I was actually doing this this is exactly what I would do so let me go ahead and publish that now and now we're just going to make one of these little icons for the um, website itself uh, so we have this little grass here all I'm going to do for that is go to Google images and look for an icon um, I haven't really thought of a good icon for this because I don't know if there's going to be rowing icons but let's try it I'm just going to search rowing icon and uh, the main thing that I always make sure to do here is I go to tools, go to usage rights, and I use Creative Commons licensing. That way I'm not going to get in trouble. We have some basic icons here, but um, I don't think any of this is really going to fit me because, you know, um, this might work right here. This is the rowing icon with um, the rowing machine itself, or maybe you'd want to go with something like this. 
We'll go ahead and grab this one just because um, this would probably work for us. Although it's not going to be seen very well because it's black and uh, black on gray is not going to be great. So let's try this one. All right. This isn't really what we're doing because this is rowing in a boat. But uh, well, you know what? We're going to just go ahead and go with this. Let me just call this rowing icon. Um, use Creative Commons or make your own logo here. And even using Creative Commons, I would also recommend like just make sure this do you have the licensing rights to use this for commercial purposes um, you can also use that option for commercial and other licenses just to make sure you're good but i generally make my own logos um, so you can make them yourself i'm not going to get into logo design because um, i don't actually make them myself i hire it out on fiverr and i have a graphic designer on my team as it is now so i don't design stuff myself guys that's not my strong point i'm just showing you guys how to do this so if you design a logo yourself you can follow these steps or you can um, hire someone on fiverr so now let's go to site icon select site icon i'm going to upload that file Assuming it is truly transparent, which it is, we should have no issues. Click on open, and then we're just going to call this rowing icon. And then I'm just going to make this icon of a person rowing for the alt text. Basically, for alt text, what you're doing is describing the purpose of the image. So that's all you do is write a quick description of it. And the reason you're doing that is because images can rank in Google, which means you can get clicks to your site from images. So more on that later, but you always want to fill that out. Uh, click select, and uh, there we go. So now the icon is a guy in water rowing on a boat. And it doesn't look that good, but I don't really care because this is just a basic demo, all right? I wouldn't actually use this in real life because I can't tell what that is. And if I didn't know it was a person rowing a boat, I would have no idea what I was looking at. Not to mention that is somebody rowing in a boat, and I'm going to talk about rowing machines. Um, but that's how you change that icon. That's how you change that logo. And that's also a very basic idea of how to make a, the world's simplest logo in Photoshop. So if we start taking a look at these sites side by side, you can see that we are making some progress and we're working our way towards a somewhat functional website. If we look at Farmland Riches, we'll see we have the logo, we have the icon, we have a nice header menu, we have a footer menu. Um, and I'm not going to be able to show you guys this part because I don't have any real articles for the site. But um, the main thing you're going to find as you get good at blogging is uh, the, your best bet is just to Google what questions you have. Because the good thing is by using WordPress, so many people, millions of websites, probably tens of millions i don't have statistics on this but i'm sure they're out there so many people use wordpress that if you're having an issue someone has had that issue before and you can simply google it and figure out how to set these things up yourself so that's the most valuable skill you can get to be a successful blogger is uh, learning how to figure things out on your own and google things and have questions answered now I want to show you how I made featured images for my articles uh, since we're doing some Photoshop stuff. And what I'm talking about is these images right here, okay? Um, I follow a very basic format of this border and I added my icon with my logo and then I have just the platforms. And so let me show you guys how I made this. I'm going to start off with a new project and the actual size I use here for these featured images is 1200 by a height of 628. And that's what I used for the images on my Farmland Riches website. So we're going to follow that same process here for uh, this website. So the first thing I did, if you look at mine, uh, they have a white background. So we're going to follow that same suit because why reinvent the wheel when you don't have to? So we'll go to our paint bucket tool. We're going to make our main color white. And then we're just going to go ahead and make that boy white. You might be wondering why I didn't just choose a non-transparent background. Uh, and that's because I don't have an answer, but you could do that as well. Next, we're going to make a border. I'm going to use this box tool. And I'm going to pick a less um, boring color. So I don't know. We'll just do green again since I did green last time. We'll pick like a dark green and just make a border that looks something like this. Uh, probably don't want it to be that wide, but that looks pretty good to me. I, then I'd move that up to the top. Now I'm just going to simply go over here and I'm going to duplicate that layer. Now I would drag that extra rectangle down here to the side. And I know I screwed up the background. So let me just move that quickly here. And then I would add some on the side as well. So I would just right click here, duplicate layer again. And then you're going to hit control T. That's going to allow you to rotate that 90 degrees. And that should lock in for me. But if it doesn't, you can just go up here and make that a firm 90 and press enter. 
Uh, I'm going to click that now, drag that over to the left hand side. It snaps into place, hit enter, and then go over here and I'm going to duplicate that one more time for my right side. And then I would simply put that over here and we have essentially now created the same template that I had made for my other site. Um, this is really not that great. Looks kind of crappy. You could certainly do better if you wanted to, but this is just what I did for my site. Now we're going to go ahead and place our logo. Uh, we're going to place embedded because I want to have um, my website URL on every uh, featured image on my site. So I would grab my rowing icon. I would place that in here make that much smaller, put that over here in the right hand corner. And then we're going to size it based on how much space our text takes up. So uh, let me just go ahead and place that zoom in a little bit. And uh, we'll put our text in here now, which is just going to be rowingbasics.com. I'm going to make that black. And if you want to follow that same process of making the front half bold, I always think that looks kind of cool. Uh, and it's actually all bold right now. So maybe I'll just make this um, regular. And then it would look like that, rowingbasics.com. It just dresses it up a little bit. I think it makes it look a little bit more appealing uh, without very much extra work whatsoever. And then I'm going to just simply, oops, I don't need two of these. So let me delete that. Now I'm just going to move this down here and that would sit at the bottom uh, corner of my image. So let's say that sits right there. And I think the rowing icon is still a little bit big. So let me shrink that down and I will put that centered with the actual logo. So now if I zoom out, we have created a template here for a simple featured image. Certainly not anything to uh, write home about, nothing glamorous, but this is uh, a basic template for a featured image. So now let's say, for example, I was doing a review of the Concept2 rower. Now I'm simply just going to go to Google and get an image of that rower or the logo. So I'm just going to search Concept2 rower and then we're going to go here to images. And generally speaking, I don't usually pick a copyright free image here because you may not find one. And uh, if you're writing a review for a company and you're using something from their website or maybe from Amazon, you're generally not going to have issues. But if you're playing it safe, you might want to just reach out to them and make sure. But this looks pretty good. I'm going to save this image as a concept to rower. Then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to place this on my featured image template that I've made. So we're going to hit um, place embedded and grab that image. And it's probably going to come in way too big, so we'll shrink it down. And we're just going to put this somewhere on this uh, page. So let's say we want to have this over on uh, the right hand side. This is how I would do this image. I'd put that on the right hand side, make it a little bit bigger. And then I'd move it down a tiny bit. Let's put it right about here. All right. And then uh, up here is where I would put my text. So now I would make other text and I would say, um, let me get rid of all of this concept to rower review. All right. This I will manually make larger just because um, we want it to fit that space. So let me just get my box about the right size. And now I'm going to select my text layer, control T, and I can just now make this whatever size I want to. So I can now drag this and uh, move this into a more appealing spot. So I would probably put it right about there. And um, I know a lot of design people are probably looking at this and they're horrified and they can't believe that anyone in their right mind would ever make something that looks this awful. But it gets the job done, guys. And this, this would work. I, I promise you, this would work on a website. So there's a featured image. Now I'm going to go up here. I'm going to do file, save as. I'm going to make this one a JPEG. And then I'm going to show you how to compress the image. That way you're not loading up your website with large files. So for now, we're just going to call this concept to rower. And it's JPEG. So we're going to save it. Uh, oh, that already exists. So we're just going to have to make it concept to rower featured image. Click on save. And uh, it's 129 kilobytes, which may not sound like a lot, but we're going to get that file size a lot smaller. Uh, you're going to you'd want to save this as a template too. If you're using Photoshop, you would do file, save as a Photoshop format, and you would just call this like template. 
I don't need it because I'm not actually using this, but um, you would want to save that as a template for future reference. So for now, we don't need to save. I'm going to close this out. And now I'm going to show you how to compress that image and upload it to the website. All right, so we made our featured image, but the issue is the file size is a little bit too big. So we're going to use a completely free website called Short Pixel in order to, small, uh, to shrink up that image size so it's not so big. So all you do is go to Short Pixel. You can sign up if you want to, but you don't need to. All you do is click Compress. Then you're going to leave this as lossy and you're going to drop the file you just created. So I made the featured image. It starts off at 125 kilobytes. I'm going to open it and it starts immediately and then once it's done it's going to give you a much smaller file size so we just got this thing down by 80 percent to just 25.9 kilobytes click the download icon and you get your file no funny business here no uh you know spam it, this seems like a pretty good site maybe down the road it might change but for now this works pretty good now you have a featured image and let's say you're making a post let me show you how you would do that so we go back to rowing basics okay now we're going to go to posts and let's pretend we have a review of the concept to rower. Well, we already made this draft right here, which I actually forgot about, but that's pretty convenient. The permalink is not going to work for us. It's too long. I would get rid of the end part. And so it would just say concept to rower review. Uh, let me go ahead and now upload our featured image. That's going to be right here under featured image. Go to set featured image upload files select your file that you just compressed make sure you have the smaller of the two files this one's 125 kilobytes this one is 26 that's the one we want so now we'd click open and then you're going to fill out your alt text and title so title you can leave that the same assuming you made it something relevant you want to have your keywords in this title and then in your alt text you just describe the image so i would just say review of the concept to rowing machine that's all I would do, set featured image, and then you're gonna see it pop up down here. And now let me go ahead and click save draft. Um, we're gonna cover the other stuff about an article soon, but for now I just wanted to show you how to do that featured image. So if we do a preview, now we can see our image in full glory on our website of concept to rower review, got a picture of the rower, got our little icon and our website listed down here. You will notice the image might be a little bit granular or pixelated, but no one's really going to care about that, to be honest with you guys. And what you gain by having smaller files on your website far outweighs potentially having a granular looking logo, because I'm telling you guys, this stuff really doesn't matter that much. Uh, having smaller file sizes does matter a lot. So that's an important step to follow. So at this point now, you know how to make a logo, you know how to make a crude looking featured image, you know how to set this icon. And that's literally all I did on farmland riches. If we, if we go look at it, there's no other design aspect here. That's it. I, I've just taught you everything. All right, how to make this logo, how to make this little icon and then this background image you could just set yourself if you wanted to have something on your home page and then my featured images i just literally showed you guys my secret sauce here if we go to acre trader versus farm together you can see we're literally following uh, the same format here this is almost identical here we just have the green border with rowingbasics.com and then farmland riches uh, my border is a little bit too big here you could probably shrink that down and um, you know get away with a smaller looking border and maybe a smaller logo down here but you could also just leave it like this and i promise you it would be fine very few people are going to find this and be like offended by the fact that it doesn't look that good this stuff really doesn't matter that much, but it does dress up your site and gives you a little bit more going on. So that's it for featured images. Now you understand image compression. Um, and anytime you upload any image on your website, uh, even for example, um, if we go back to Rowing Basics, the homepage, this image right here, I also downloaded through Creative Commons to make sure that it was um, uh, an image I could utilize. And then I put it through Short Pixel to compress it. And then I uploaded it and added a title and an alt tag. That way it is a much smaller file size. So that's how you make images. That's how you upload images. Uh, you've really come quite a ways here, guys. So now let's get into the next subject. Well, now we're going to talk about one of my favorite plugins out there, which is called Pretty Links. And this is a plugin that allows you to set up your own separate links on your website when you are pointing out to somebody else's site. And it's important to do this for a couple of different reasons. 
Number one, it allows you to track the number of clicks each of these links gets. So for example, if you're sending traffic out to an affiliate link, you're gonna wanna use a pretty link, that way you can track how many clicks it's actually getting. Second of all, it's very common in this industry for companies to change the affiliate platform that they work with. So for example, one of the popular ones out there is called Impact Radius. However, there are also other ones out there like CJ Affiliate or Ambassador. So let's say for example, you're working with one particular company and they give you an affiliate link. But then three months later, they work with a new affiliate platform and then you have to go change that link. Well, if you have to change that link across every single article that you've written, that's gonna take you many hours. And yes, I am speaking from personal experience. When I first started blogging, I didn't use pretty links and I would constantly have to chase down and change links and it was a huge pain in the butt but I'm gonna show you how to avoid doing that very easily using Pretty Links. But first of all, what I wanna show you is Pretty Links in action so you guys are able to understand what I'm talking about. So let's go over to comparisons on farmland riches and open up the article, Acre Trader versus Farm Together. So I'm affiliated with both of these different companies and I earn commissions when people click these links. And at the end of this video, guys, I'm gonna show you the real money that this blog is earning, just so you guys know that I'm not blowing smoke here and that this small website is actually making money almost every single day. But if we scroll down here, um, this table here I'm gonna show you how to do later, but if you see this button right here that says view investments, and you look at the bottom left here, you can see it says farmlandriches.com slash go slash farm together. Then we also have the same thing here for Acre Trader. Farmlandriches.com slash go slash Acre Trader. And we have the same thing here for Farmland LP. Farmlandriches.com slash go slash Farmland LP. So anytime I'm linking to these sites, I'm not putting the actual affiliate link or web address. I'm using a pretty link, which is going to redirect it. So for example, and again, the same thing right here, you'll see these links are exactly the same. And so let me just show you what that would look like. So let's say you're sitting here and you're reading this article and you decide you wanna learn more about farmland uh, investing, so you click on Acre Trader. When you click on View Investments, I want you guys to watch up here because this link is going to change. So it goes to Pretty Links first and then redirects to the affiliate link. And it's very easy to set up, guys. And again, the advantage is, number one, now you can track how many clicks you're actually getting. And number two, now, if Acre Trader down the road has to change their affiliate link, all you have to do is change it once and it updates every link on your website no matter where you use it. One of the most important things when it comes to blogging is having a good system for organization because the better your systems are, the less time it's going to take to actually make these changes and you're gonna be able to focus on creating content and scaling your blog and you're not gonna be bogged down with activities like going through and changing links across your entire site. So one of my philosophies, guys, is build it right from the beginning and that's why I'm teaching you guys three years of tips and tricks that I've accumulated with my blogging career. So now let's go back to this article, guys. I think you have a good idea of what I'm talking about here. So anytime I mention Acre Trader or Farm Together, I use this link right here, this go slash Acre Trader. But now I wanna show you the back end so you understand how this actually works. So we already installed Pretty Links when we were doing the different plugins at the beginning. So you should already have this on your WordPress site. Now you're gonna click on Pretty Links. Now I have the pro plan because it gives me a couple of different features, but you can use the free plan and you're not gonna have any issues. The only thing you can't really do with the free plan is advanced reporting, but you probably don't need that. This right here is the back end of Pretty Links, and I also use this to set up redirects, which I'm going to explain that next. But anyway, for every one of my different affiliates, and even for the non-affiliates, I have Pretty Links set up, so when I mention them, I use that link and it redirects to their website. 
So to be fully transparent with you guys here, I am affiliated with Acre Trader and I'm affiliated with Farm Together. I'm in the process of creating an affiliate program with Farm Funder as well as Steward and Harvest Returns just approved their affiliate program. So I'm going to have three more affiliates for this blog in the near future, which will mean it's going to make more and more money. But there's a couple of things I want to show you. First of all, let's look at the actual clicks here because that is one of the most useful pieces of data through Pretty Links. So there's two ways to look at this. Number one, you can look at clicks on an individual link by clicking over here. So for example, Acre Trader has received 125 unique clicks so far. So if I click on this, it's actually going to show me a chart and I can see exactly how many clicks this article is getting per day. So you can literally hover over it and see, okay, every single day, this not article, but this affiliate link is getting traffic. So it shows you that people are clicking on it. But the other thing that's really cool, if you go back here to pretty links, okay, and you hover over it and then you click on clicks, this shows you total clicks across the entire website. So it shows me where people are clicking and where they're going. So every single day on farmlandriches.com, I'm getting anywhere from seven to 20 clicks per day on all the different links. Some of these are affiliate links and some of them just point right to the website. But you can see right here exactly what's getting clicked. So for example, today somebody has clicked on the Farm Together affiliate link, the Acre Trader affiliate link, the Farmland LP, Farm Funder links, and Harvest Returns. And again, these are not affiliate links, but these ones are. But it gives me an overall snapshot of what people are clicking on on my website. And this is what you're going to use to monetize your site. So now I want to go back into Pretty Links and show you guys what this actually looks like because I want to show you two examples here. Like I said, Acre Trader is a company I'm affiliated with. So if I click on this, you're going to see my actual affiliate link pasted in here. And right here is where you paste what you want the link to be. So I take my actual affiliate link from the affiliate dashboard that I'll show you later and I paste it in here under the target URL or where you want this person to actually end up at the end and then the pretty link is the attractive looking link and the one you use for organizational site across your entire website which is go slash acre trader that's the format that i recommend is go slash blank whatever the name is but you could get that uh, get rid of that and just do slash acre trader if you wanted to so this here is an affiliate link that's why there's all this extra code in here but if we go back to pretty links and then we go to Steward, for example. I don't have an affiliate link for Steward, so I just redirect right to their website. However, it's just important to have access to this data because this shows me how many clicks this is getting. So for example, I'm in negotiations right now with Steward and Farm Funder about how much they're gonna pay me per referral, but if I'm able to show them data and say, hey, my website is generating traffic almost every single day for your investment, sometimes you know two or three hits a day, you can then give them a value proposition that shows, hey, I am generating traffic and I want an affiliate link. So it gives you more leverage when you can actually show companies data and say, hey, I'm directing this traffic to your website. And then if you need to play hardball, you can actually turn off the traffic, uh, which is probably not something we're going to get into in this tutorial. But that's more of an advanced negotiation strategy um, for negotiating with affiliates. But that's why we use Pretty Links. It allows you to track and see everything. I'm going to show you how to make one, and then we're going to talk about redirects. So to make a new Pretty Link, it is very simple. You go over here to your Pretty Links, and then you're going to click Add New, and then you're going to make that link. So let's say, for example, Fundrise was one of the people I was mentioning on my website. I would make that here the title, Fundrise. That's a real estate investing platform. Next, I want to fill out my pretty link. By default, it is 1NKU, but that's not very pretty at all. So I'm going to make it slash go. And the slash is already there. You don't have to type it in. So go slash first trade. Go slash fundrise. So that is my pretty link. 
Now, I actually am an affiliate for Fundrise, but let's pretend I'm not. So let's just go to fundrise.com. And let's say we're just looking to send people to this website when we are mentioning it in the article. I would copy that and I would paste this in here. So now I click update and you're going to leave this as a 307 temporary. You don't change that. But now anytime somebody clicks on this link, which is farmlandriches.com slash go slash fundrise, they're going to be redirected to fundrise.com. So let me show you guys a live example of that. I'm going to copy this link. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to close this out and I'm going to do a new tab. I'm going to paste that in and I'm going to hit enter and it brings me to fundrise.com. Not only that, it's also tracking this so I can see exactly how many clicks I'm getting. So for example, if I wasn't affiliated with Fundrise and I wanted to pitch to them a value proposition of, hey, this is why I should be a, an affiliate, I could literally show them the data and be like, look, I'm generating clicks every single day. Um, can I be part of your affiliate program? So that is Pretty Links. It's free. You don't need the pro plan, but if you want to do advanced reporting, you will need that pro plan, but you can do that down the road once you have some actual earnings and revenue from your blog to reinvest. Now I want to talk about setting up a redirect. So before I show you how to set up a redirect on your website, it's important to understand what a redirect even is. And a redirect happens when you're moving the address of a certain page or a post on your website. So for example, let's go to my beginner's guide to farmland investing. This guide lives at farmlandriches.com slash farmland dash investing dash for dash beginners slash. If I wanted to change this URL, let's say I wanted to make it farmland investing and get rid of this for beginners part here, I would need to set up a redirect and change that URL. So what would happen is every time somebody went to farmland dash investing dash for dash beginners, it would redirect it to that new website, which would just be farmland dash investing. Um, the only time you're really going to do this is if you're changing your permalink, which if you do things correctly from the beginning, you're not going to have to do that. But let's say, for example, you make a mistake and you end up needing to change that permalink. Well, you need to create a redirect. Otherwise, you're going to get a 404 error on your website, also known as page not found. So if I just go to a random website, a random part of my site here, it's going to bring me to a 404, which is this right here. This is not good because if somebody ends up on this page, they're going to abandon your website and it's not going to be good as far as the um, analytics go. They're going to see a high level of abandonment. So you want to redirect any 404s. So anytime you're deleting an old article or changing the permalink for a page, you want to set up a redirect to send that traffic to the new location or send it to a different page. So for example, like let's say, one of the platforms like Farmland LP, let's say they went out of business, okay? And then I didn't want this article on my site anymore. I want to redirect that traffic somewhere else. That way I don't have broken links on my website. So I might set up a redirect and send all of that traffic just to my beginner's guide to farmland investing. That way, you know, I don't end up losing that traffic and getting a bunch of 404s, which is going to send bad signals to Google. So the way you do that is through pretty links, which I showed you in the last section. And all you're going to do is set up a redirect that links from the one article to the other. So I have two set up here on my site. I labeled them as redirects and this one has actually gotten 27 clicks. So it's actually being used. And I'll show you how it works. So I ended up screwing something up here and I left all of this text in my permalink when I posted this article. So let me actually go to this site and show you guys what happens. If I go to farmlandriches.com slash, oh, I got to get my slash in there, slash acre trader dash versus dash farm together dash 2020 dash best dash farmland dash investment. We already talked about permalinks earlier. You guys know that's way too long. So let's say you wanted to shorten it after you publish that article. Well, you would need to set up a redirect. That way this doesn't bring them to a 404. And as you will see, when I click enter, it redirects to just acre trader dash versus 
dash farm together, which is a much better SEO friendly permalink. So if you screw something up and you're redirecting people somewhere else, set up a redirect over in pretty links. And you do this by posting the new article location or new page location. And you make the pretty link the old location of where it was versus where it now exists. And that is going to allow people to have a seamless transition with your new address for that article. Alrighty guys, so now I wanna show you how to set up tables using Ninja Tables when putting together your WordPress website. And I wanna start off by showing you how I use tables over on my blog, Farmland Riches. Now, this is where I'm using tables is I run this site-wide. So on every article, I have this little table here that says best farmland investments for accredited investors. And it includes the logos of these companies as well as the minimum investments and then a button where they can click and view investments. And as we already covered, I utilize pretty links in order to have clean linking that is easy to change. So even within these tables, you'll notice that I'm actually using a pretty link because it's bringing us to go slash farm together and um, I will just show you that as well by clicking on it it brings us to this website first and then redirects to the actual affiliate link now the bad news is I have the pro version of ninja tables which allows me to put these logos in here as well as these buttons and links so with the free version you're not able to do that but I still want to show you guys how the tables work because it's very useful when conveying information clearly on your blog. Because the truth is, while you can explain a lot of stuff with text and images and bullet points, there are some things that are just best explained through a table. So let me show you how to make a table over on the Rowing Basics website, and then we'll put it into our blog article just so you guys can get an idea of how this actually works. So now here we are in the back end of our rowingbasics.com website. We're gonna click on Ninja Tables, which we've already installed, and then we're going to create our first table. So the first thing you wanna do is give your table a title. This is mostly just for your own use. So I'm gonna call this Best uh, Rowing Machine Deals. And then as a description, I'm going to say the best prices on rowing machines right now. And that's just a brief description of the table. I don't believe this actually matters for SEO, but I always fill out little descriptions here and there because you never know what Google is going to be using in order to find out about your site. So that's all I'm gonna do, and now I'm going to click Add. Um, this is going to add this information in here, and now we are going to add data for our table. So the very first thing we have to do is figure out our first column of information, which I'm gonna create now by clicking this button here, add column, and then you're gonna type in a column name. So I'm going to make this called um, rowing machine. Um, that way we can have the name of the rower, and then that's gonna be the first column. I'm not gonna change anything else here, um, and I'm going to click add column, and then we're going to add another column which is going to be called uh, price. So basically what I'm doing with this table is creating a list of popular rowing machines and the corresponding price associated with that rower. So once I have all the columns I'm looking for, now I can start adding data, which is going to be the actual machines and the actual prices. So let me go ahead and add that data now. And if you check this box, it's gonna keep adding new data as you go. So let's say the rowing machine system, let's just, we're gonna make something up here. We're gonna call it, the Gore, the Gore 64, let's say that's a rowing machine and that the price on that machine is $875, okay? Now I'm gonna hit add. Next, I will be able to add more data in here for this table. So let's say for example, the, uh, the row junior costs um, $499, okay? So I would add that. And let's say I'm just adding a bunch of pricing for the rowing machines here. So uh, another one is called the T65. And let's say that that one's more expensive at $1,999. We'll click add. And then when I'm done adding information, all I would do is click this X. 
So now I've created a very basic table that shows us here a couple of different rowing machines available and the corresponding prices. And if I want to get an idea of what this table is going to look like, all I have to do is click the preview button and it's going to show me what my created table is going to look like. Now there's a couple things that I don't necessarily want being shown here. For example, the search bar um, is also the ability to sort. This is just not something that I, I personally want to have on my table. Um, so I'm going to turn these functionalities off because um, it's just something that's going to be too much for the average user and it's not actually helping people because there's not that much information here. So in order to fix that guys, you're going to click on table design and we're going to do a couple of things here. First of all, we're going to uncheck the box that says enable sorting of the table by the visitor. So now you can't sort which again, it's going to make things easier and then uncheck the box that says enable the visitor to filter or search the table. That is also not something that I want people to be able to do. And so now we just have a simple table of information and I'm going to click update settings. So at this point, We've created a table and now if I do a new preview, you'll see that the search functionality and sort functionality has been removed. So let's say you're happy with this table at this point and you're looking to add this into your blog. Well, this is how you would do that. You're going to go back here and you're going to copy down this short code and then you're going to paste it in the post or the page where you're looking to add it. So if we go over to posts here, you'll see I have my concept Two rower review 2021 best rower. If I click into this article, I can go ahead and just paste that in there and then I'm going to click the publish button. So now all that's visible on this article is the table that we just created. So let me go back to the website now and show you guys what that looks like. So here we are on the Rowing Basics homepage. Once again, we have our image there and our basic design elements we created. Uh, and we have this demo front page. Now I want to go ahead and show you what the actual article looks like that we just uh, put together. Now I didn't actually set up any links to that article, so I, I don't really have a good way of getting to it. So let me actually go to the back end and uh, show you how I would preview that. So I would go here, I'd go to posts. I would then click on concept Two rower, this article we just put together. And then I'm going to click on the link right here, which is going to bring us to the website. And as you're going to see, we have this featured image that we put together in the previous example, right up top on our page. And then right below that, we have the H1 header, which shows up automatically as the title of our article. And then we asked to have that table placed right here within the article as well. Now you're going to notice a blue edit table button. This is only visible to you. And if you are logged out, it is not visible. And what's helpful about that is if you find that you're on this article and then you want to change some of that information, you can just click on edit table rather than having to go all the way into the back end and finding it through Ninja tables. So that's how you create tables. And it's a very helpful way to organize information on your website that may not be as easily conveyed just through paragraphs and bullet points. Like I said, if you want to pay for that pro plan, it is going to enable you to add images and buttons to your table. However, you can always wait and upgrade down the road and decide to put together tables like this at a later date. Uh, we also use these tables over on investingsimple.com for conveying information in a helpful way. So for example, let me look up an article we have on Robin Hood versus Acorns. I will show you how we use this table. If we click on this article right here and then I scroll down, you're going to see we have a couple of different plugins here. We have a summary and then we have a table that conveys important information such as minimum balance, fees, commissions, assets, et cetera, et cetera. This right here is all done through the Ninja Tables plugin. So um, the, the main point here, guys, again, you may look at a blog like Investing Simple and think, oh my gosh, look at all these fancy widgets and tools. How am I ever going to get there? Well, keep in mind, this took one step at a time and this doesn't happen overnight. This is uh, two and a half, um, almost three years of work now that you're looking at. Um, but that's how we use tables is for conveying information. And we also have 
this free stock promotions table that we run site-wide as well, which allows us to earn additional affiliate income. Uh, and the other thing that's great about tables is you can have tables in many different articles. Um, and then when you change the table itself, it's going to update that information across all of your articles. So it's a good way to uh, update information without having to manually go in and change it in every single article. So now I want to show you guys how I set up my email collection uh, through ConvertKit. And that is a completely free email provider that I use. It's free to get started with, but once you grow to a certain number of subscribers, it is going to require you to have a... Um, a paid plan but right now I am personally using the free plan and I want to go ahead and log into the back end of my convert kit uh, dashboard just to prove to you guys that this small little website is in fact collecting emails um, every couple of days so let me log into that dashboard now and show you what that looks like and then I'll show you how to implement this for free into your website so here we are in the back end of ConvertKit and as you can see I have collected 13 total email subscribers from this list. Uh, some days I get a couple in a row, some days I don't get any at all, but I am getting a consistent number of emails and since this is a brand new website, anything that you're getting is honestly pretty good. Uh, I'm not monetizing this on the back end at all. I'm basically just collecting emails and maybe down the road I may decide to do some email marketing to boost my affiliate commissions. But let me show you what that looks like starting off on the Farmland Riches website. Well, first of all, when, any, when anyone is on the website for a while, then they hover over to the back button or they try to exit, a pop-up shows up where they have the option to opt in for the free guide. Since I'm logged in, it may not show up, but if I click on the free guide button, you're going to see that pop up. And you're going to see here a ebook cover called Beginner's Guide to Investing in Farmland. Um, I paid somebody on Fiverr about $15 to put that together, so very minimal effort there. All you would do is drop your email, click on download the free guide. It's going to start a download and add you to my email list. So how did I put this together? Well, let me go ahead and cover that now. So first of all, the free guide that I'm actually emailing them is actually just a copy of my cornerstone article here called Beginner's Guide to Farmland Investing. So this is the main article on my website that brings in a lot of the traffic. And I simply took this entire article. And again, I paid somebody on Fiverr to turn this article into a PDF and have it available for download. Uh, if you want to do it yourself, you can do it, but you can get a pretty decent looking guide on Fiverr for under $100. Um, so that's what I did, but I want to show you now what that looks like in the back end. So I'm going to go over here to Farmland Riches, and there's a plugin called Convert Pro. I have the pro version of this, but you can usually use the free version for a little while until uh, you get to a certain point when it's not working well for you. And I already have my call to action here called lead generation, but if you didn't, you would click on create new. It's turned on, it is a pop-up, and so if I click on lead gen, it's going to give me more information about this pop-up. And so here we have all the different visuals that I've added here. I'm not going to show you guys step by step how to do this because to be completely honest with you, I didn't do this myself. Um, I had my web designer do this for me. Um, I, I can't go into everything with such insane detail. Otherwise, we'd have like a 10 hour video here but I can point you in the right direction and show you what I'm using to derive income from this website. But it's a pretty simple drag and drop builder here where you guys can set up and change these different elements associated with your email opt-in. And then you just have to link it up with your ConvertKit account and you'll be in business collecting emails. And then what you can do is over on uh, ConvertKit, you can set up an email autoresponder if you want to, or you can simply just start collecting those emails emails and then down the road once you build this up into a larger business that's when you can figure out what you're going to do with those emails but I always say it's good to build it right from the get-go so you're better off building and building this system and collecting emails from the beginning because even though this website is getting 
probably 10 to 15 hits a day. Uh, I'm still collecting emails every couple of days. All right, guys, so now I wanna give you an overview of the different metadata on your blog and kind of explain to you guys what that is and how this allows Google to find and rank your website. So metadata is anything on a website that gives Google or a search engine information about the type of resources being shared and there's a lot that you, you can control when it comes to this information you're supplying to Google. So I'm actually gonna show you this over on Farmland Riches because we don't have any real information on this blog uh, and I don't actually plan on building this blog right now so I'm not gonna invest any money into content. So let me go over to farmlandriches.com instead and I'm gonna show you the metadata that I'm talking about. So let's jump over to our beginner's guide to farmland investing and cover some of this metadata. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into the back end. So let me go ahead and click on edit post and we're just gonna start off at the top of the page and work our way down. So the very first thing when it comes to metadata is the title of your actual blog post. And you wanna make sure that this is SEO friendly and includes whatever keyword you're looking to rank for. So for example, if I was starting my blog on rowing and I was doing a review of the concept to rower, I would wanna have concept to rower review 2021 in the title, all right? So you wanna have your keyword in there and you wanna make sure that your um, title here is written for a human. So a lot of people often will make the mistake of loading something up with keywords or they're trying to do some black hat SEO thing. That, none of that shit works anymore, guys. I promise you it's a waste of your time. Write titles for humans. So this, for example, how to invest in farmland for beginners in 2021. My keyword is how to invest in farmland. That's what I'm trying to rank for in the next one to two years. Pretty competitive, so it might take a little while, but it is a long-term investment after all. Next up, let's talk about the permalink, which is listed right here. I tried to keep this at three to four words. You don't want to overload it here. And I already showed you how to make sure that it is minimal and doesn't have any unnecessary categories or dates or things like that. So I made this farmland investing for beginners. I actually should change this because I'm not trying to rank for that keyword. I'm trying to rank for how to invest in farmland. And you want your keyword that you're trying to rank for to be included in your permalink. And of course, guys, if I did change this permalink, we would have to set up a redirect using pretty links. So um, I'll actually go ahead and do this because this is an important lesson here. Um, and I'll show you how to set that up here real quick because this really should be what I'm trying to rank for, which is how to invest in farmland. So let me go ahead and set that up now. I'm gonna open up my pretty links here in a new tab. And then we're gonna go ahead and make a new one. And I'm gonna call this one redirect and then it's going to be uh, farmland investing for beginners. All right, so what we're gonna do first is take the existing URL for this article, and uh, if we wanna get there easily, just click on that, and then we can copy this URL, and we're going to paste this here as the pretty link, okay? Uh, we actually only need the back half of this because um, we just need the uh, existing URL for this website and then the target URL is going to be whatever we change it to. Uh, I'll get rid of that slash. And now we're gonna go over here and we're going to click on edit post and we're gonna change the permalink. So now we're gonna click on edit and we're going to change this. So I wanna actually make this how-to-invest-in-farmland. Now that is five words, but a lot of these words are pretty short here, like to and in, so not too worried about it. Still pretty concise. So now I've changed my permalink and I wanna go ahead and click update. But guess what I did in that process? I may have broken my website. Now every link that I have on my website referencing to that article is not going to work because we just changed its location. So now that I've gone ahead and changed that permalink, now we just wanna finish up creating that redirect. 
So we pretty much make the new address here, which is going to be what this points to. So we are going to go ahead and uh, copy that URL for the post we just updated. And then we're going to go ahead and paste that in here as the target URL. And then we're going to go ahead and click update. So what we've done here is created a redirect. That way, every time somebody goes to the URL, which is farmland-investing-for-beginners, it's instead going to redirect them to how to invest in farmland. That way, if there are any 404 errors showing up from that redirect, this is officially in place. Next up on the category of um, metadata, let's go back to edit post and talk more about this, all right? So we've talked about the title, we've talked about the permalink, Next up, let's scroll down and talk about the headers. So we've already talked about how these headers work, but you wanna make sure you have your keywords showing up throughout your headings, okay? So you see best farmland investments, what is farmland investing, types of farmland investments. Just use common sense here, guys. You wanna include your keywords and other things people may be searching for in your headers. Again, when you're writing these resources, guys, you're not writing them for the algorithm. You're not writing them for Google. You're writing this for a human being. Do not try to make it too complicated. Do not try to load it with keywords. It's going to hurt you in the long run. Write content for humans and optimize for user experience. And that is how you win with Google. Okay. Other than that, a couple of other things surrounding metadata. Uh, categories. I just have a couple of different categories set up here. I have platform reviews, comparisons, and guides. And if you wanna make a new category, you just press add category. I don't really use tags, to be honest with you guys. Uh, it can be a way you can organize your site's content. I might have done tags with some of the other posts, for example. Yes, yeah, so over here, you can see tags I used. The only time that I've used tags on this website is if a specific investment platform is being mentioned. So for example, the tag Acre Trader. If I click on that, this shows me all articles that mention Acre Trader. So that's good for organization, but that's all I do with tags. Uh, let me go back to posts here and click on our main article, how to invest in farmland for beginners. Um, and we'll go back into it and talk more about metadata. Uh, categories, same thing, tags, we already talked about that. Uh, images on the site, you wanna make sure that when you upload your images, not only are you compressing them using short pixel, you also wanna fill out some alt text here, which basically describes the purpose of the image. Um, this is additional information that Google crawls uh, your website for, and they can use this information to understand what your website is about. So you wanna fill out a description of what the actual image is. This is a pretty lazy description, so you could honestly go into much more detail, and it's gonna benefit you in the long run. But you wanna make sure you have something here rather than nothing. Other than that, guys, again, making sure that your website has images that are compressed is very important but you really just wanna make sure you organize information in a way that is designed for humans in a user-friendly manner. And then, you know, you also have internal links to other articles. Obviously, when you're starting with your first article, you have nowhere to link people to, but over time, as you build this resource out, you're gonna do a lot of internal linking to other articles on your website to give people an easy to navigate and helpful resource. Then at the very bottom here, guys, the last thing regarding metadata is to fill out this Yoast SEO portion here. And uh, I, I do apologize because I don't think I had you install this plugin. So if you haven't yet uh, install the Yoast SEO plugin, it is free and it's going to give you a couple of helpful tools here. OK, the main thing is it allows you to edit your snippet. OK also known as your meta description. And this is just a quick synopsis of the article. So for me, this is what I've written here. Interested in farmland investing question mark? Here is our comprehensive beginner's guide to investing in farmland with no prior experience. This green bar tells you whether or not you've written too little or too much. Uh, and I don't really pay attention to the actual uh, SEO analysis or anything here. So you want to fill out this snippet with uh, one or two sentences of information that do include your keywords and make sure that this bar is green. The other thing you should check out is this readability score, which is going to help you improve the readability of your article. I make sure that every, almost every article I do has green readability, which looks at different things such as 
passive voice, consecutive sentences, subheading distribution, paragraph length, sentence length, etc. So I always get this to green, which means I'm making sure that I'm optimizing my writing for human beings. Other than that, guys, that is literally all I do in terms of metadata. And this allows me to supply Google with enough information that they're able to rank my articles over time. So the next thing I want to show you guys is how to disable comments on your blog. And this is totally up to your discretion whether or not you want to leave comments on or off. In my experience, when I leave comments on with my blog, I find that 80% of the comments I receive are actually spam, where people are looking to promote things in your comment section that are not relevant to your article. I deal with a lot of spam comments across all of my different social media platforms, so I'm always looking to minimize the number I'm receiving, so wherever possible, I always disable comments. So if you scroll down to the bottom of my blog article, where the comment section would ordinarily be, you're going to notice there's no comment section here, and that is intentional. The way that I do that is I click on the edit post button here, and then if you scroll down here to the very bottom of the article, you're going to see an option of not allowing comments. So right here, I uncheck the box that says allow comments, and I've done this across all of my articles to cut down on spam. Totally up to you if you decide to use that functionality. So now let's talk about the type of content that you may decide to create on your blog. And it's going to be different based on the niche that you get into. But there's basically four different types of articles that we create for the blogs that I am a part of. The first type of content is a review article, and this is the most straightforward. This is where you are reviewing a product or service and sharing things that are good and bad about it, and overall giving people a big picture idea of what this company or product has to offer. So the first type of content is review. Second of all, the next type of content is called comparison content, and this is when you're comparing one thing to the other. So maybe you are writing an article called Apples versus Oranges. That is you talking about the similarities and differences between apples and oranges, whereas in a main review article, you would just be doing Apple review and Orange review. The third type of content is called FAQ content. And, uh, well, I got a pretty distorted feature image here. I definitely have to fix at some point. Uh, but anyway, this is where you are just diving into one particular question that somebody has about the particular thing. So let's say, for example, if we're using the oranges and apples analogy um, for an uh, FAQ, uh, maybe somebody was wondering, does do oranges have vitamin C? So that is a FAQ type content that we can answer through our articles. Uh, so in the case of Webull, that's this article here called Webull Taxes Explained. How do taxes work with this brokerage? That is the third type of content that we make. And then the final type is value content, which is not related to any specific company, but is meant to provide value to the reader. So Roth IRA 2021. You can, of course, open up a Roth IRA with dozens of different companies we're affiliated with, but we're just talking broadly about the Roth IRA here and covering a beginner's guide for investors. So back to our rowing example, um, an example of a value article could be best at home rowing exercises where you just share some good training regimens for rowing at home, that would be an example of a value article. An example of an FAQ article related to rowing could be how to set up your concept to rowing machine or how to assemble your rowing machine at home. Uh, that, if it was about a specific rowing machine, you're answering a question that somebody has about that specific unit, that would be an FAQ article. Uh, the comparison article, pretty simple. Let's say I was doing concept two rower versus um, Peloton rowing machine. That would be an example of a comparison article where we're looking at the pros and cons, prices, features, and comparing these two products. And then the dedicated review would just be like concept to rower review. That's literally all that I do. I keep it simple and those are the only four types of content you will ever find on any of my blogs. 
So if we go back to farmlandriches.com, for example, you're going to see all of that reflected. We have Beginner's Guide to Farmland Investing. This is, of course, a value piece of content. It's not about a specific platform, but as we get into the article, you'll see specific platforms are being mentioned. Um, and some of these I'm actually affiliated with. So if people actually click on these and, and uh, you know, the, uh, visit this website and sign up, I may earn a commission in the process. But this is the value article right here. We also have platform reviews. I have all these different reviews. This is the review content. Um, under comparisons, this is the comparison content. I've only done one of these articles so far comparing Acre Trader to Farm Together, which are two very popular platforms. And then under this is all value. So I have farmland versus stocks, farmland versus traditional real estate. This could technically be called comparison content as well. But that's the only four types of content I make is value, FAQ, uh, comparison, and main review content. I don't actually have any FAQ articles on this website just because uh, I'm not looking to get that complicated. I only have like 14 articles on this entire blog. And I think that is shocking to some people because you would think that to have a successful blog that makes money, you need to have hundreds of articles. And the answer is no. Uh, this, this blog, for example, if we go over here to posts, I'll show you, this blog has 12. It only has 12 total articles on the entire website. I wrote one of them and the other 11, I hired somebody else to write them. And this, art, this blog has 12 articles total and it's an entire website that's actually making money. So you don't need to have hundreds of articles in order to make money. You can keep it pretty simple. But that is pretty much it as far as the content I create. It is those four different types of content. So now we're gonna talk about how to find affiliates for your blog. And if you guys are not aware of that yet, that is the 100% monetization strategy that I follow. I don't run ads on my website. I don't sell my own products. I literally just generate commissions by sending leads over to different companies through my review content, comparison content, FAQ and value content. It is a simple formula that is scalable and repeatable and very easy to follow. Some people overly complicate it or they do different things and that's totally up to you. If you wanna sell your own products, if you wanna run ads, go ahead. I, I hope it works well for you. I am merely able to show you what works for Ryan Scribner, okay? And what works for me is keeping it simple in terms of monetization and solely relying on affiliates. So how do you find affiliates for your blog? Well, there's a couple of different things, all right? First of all, if you know what companies are in your niche, which you should, which would mean you're a credible uh, person in your niche, you should be aware of what companies exist in your niche. So for example, with my niche here of farmland investing, there's only like seven different platforms available today that offer them. And I've actually written reviews of all of them right here. It's Farm Together, Acre Trader, Farm Funder, Farmland LP, Harvest Returns, and Steward. And you better bet I've reached out to all of them and I've affiliated with two of them and two of them are working on a program for me right now. So for me, since this is a pretty small little community here of farmland investors, um, I, I basically just emailed these companies directly and I said, hey, I've started this blog of reviewing farmland investing platforms. Do you have an affiliate program? And that is how I became affiliated with these different companies. Usually you'll email them, they'll get back to you, they're gonna wanna jump on a phone call, talk about what it is that you're doing, and then you're going to explain to them what your blog is. So in the case of Farmland Riches, I said, hey, I'm creating a resource that helps people understand what options they have available to them as far as farmland investing goes. And they were interested in that and they let me be part of their affiliate program. That being said, if you're looking to find out what affiliates are available, I wanna show you two affiliate networks that I am a part of. The first one is CJ Affiliate. The second one is Impact Radius, okay? Also guys, 
uh, just to show you an example here, like for my rowing example, if I was looking to contact someone at Concept2 to ask about an affiliate program, I would simply go to their website, scroll to the bottom, and look for their contact information, which is info at concept2.com. So I would then email them and I would say, hello, my name is Ryan. Do you have an affiliate program? Who would I reach out to about that? Uh, it also might be wise to just directly look for their marketing department because affiliate uh, marketing is part of the marketing department, okay? That being said though, let me go ahead and log into my CJ Affiliate. But anyway, if we go over here to Advertisers, CJ Affiliate, this is completely free to join, and then you can search for different advertisers. There are literally thousands of different companies on CJ Affiliate looking for your leads, and so you can poke around here and look for different companies. You can do it by advertiser, by keyword, by category, all kinds of stuff. I'm just going to show you by category, just for example. Uh, let's say you have a sports and let's say sports and fitness because we're looking for exercise equipment because of the blog that we're doing there related to um, rowing. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and click search. And this is going to show me 45 different affiliates related to equipment, exercise, and health. All right. Uh, so if I scroll through here, you'll see a couple of different companies, FitTrack, FitOn, HealthLabs.com. You would obviously want to do your own research about these companies. And I I'm kind of not a big fan of this strategy because you don't know a lot of these companies. Like I, I would never recommend or, or use links for a company I've never heard of. Um, but if you happen to find a company in here that you know of, then you may apply and be a part of their program. Okay. But the, the thing I'm getting at here is don't just randomly send traffic to some company you've never heard of because that is not ethical affiliate marketing. And, and that's not something I would recommend. Um, but if you do find a company you want to be a part of, you would click on apply to program and then you're going to apply and then you're going to hear back from them whether or not you are accepted. So this is one way to find affiliates. Um, you can also do that through impact radius. So let me go ahead and log in there and I will show you a couple of affiliates. So uh, give me one second here. We'll log into my account. And again, just to show you guys my real earnings here, this is not for farmland riches, but this is just one of my affiliate programs in the last, uh, looks like seven days here. That's $1,700 uh, or 1715 in payouts from Betterment, Robinhood, Wealthsimple, and Prosper. But if you want to look for more brands, you click on brands right here, and you can see what brands are available broken down into different categories. So again, I'm going to go with fitness. So let's look at sports, outdoors, and fitness. And this shows us 156 different brands. So there we go. Adidas is a pretty well-known brand. Uh, Ariat, I've heard of them. Uh, so maybe, for example, over on your blog where you talk about uh, rowing, maybe you do an article talking about the best rowing apparel and what's the best clothing to wear while you are rowing. And maybe Adidas has some compression shorts that you recommend. Maybe you become a, uh, an affiliate for Adidas and you recommend them there. Uh, one other affiliate program I want to show you guys quick, which pretty much every blogger should be part of, is Amazon Associates because pretty much anything that you can purchase on Amazon, you can earn a commission from. So if I go over here to Amazon Associates, you'd want to sign up for this and put in your information for your blog. I'm not affiliated with Amazon for Farmland Riches just because um, I didn't have any books or apparel or things like that. So these are my actual earnings over the last 28 days. Um, if I go over here to the report section, we'll get a better idea of my earnings. But this is my actual Amazon Associates account for my um, entire YouTube channel. So let me go back to a different report here. This isn't what I was looking for. So if we look at the last 30 days, I've earned $495.17 from Amazon referrals. Uh, and again, you can pretty much link to pretty much anything you can think of. Like for example, we'll go to product linking, okay? And we'll go to uh, product links and uh, you can create a link here just searching for it. So uh, uh, let's just search concept to rower. And I know they sell it on Amazon because that's where I bought mine, all right? And there it is right there for $1,249. You'd go here to get your link 
and then you would simply go here to text only and you would copy the shortened link right here and this is your Amazon affiliate link. Now you might be wondering how much would you earn from this rower? Well, let me go ahead and show you that right now. So this right here is the standard fee schedule for Amazon associates and depending on what you are selling, it's a different commission ranging from 0% all the way up to 10%. Uh, you guys can check this out yourself if you wanna familiarize yourself with the different uh, commissions. But right here we have sports, which would incorporate fitness equipment, I'm pretty sure. And that is a 3% category. So if you did successfully refer a sale of the concept to rower, uh, real quick, let me pull it up again just so we can get an exact number. The concept to rower, uh, we said this sells for $1249.96. Let me just pull up my calculator. So we'll just go with $1249, multiply that by the 3%, and that would mean you would earn a commission of $37.47. So if you refer to sale to Amazon and somebody bought this rower, you would earn yourself $37.47, 3% of the total cost of that rower. Again, I would still reach out to Concept2 anyway and see if they have a separate affiliate program. Uh, for example, for a while, guys, I was referring sales to Amazon for the Ledger, which is a hardware wallet for storing Bitcoin offline. I was referring sales to Amazon and I was making like, 4%, I think, commissions. Well, I found out that Ledger has their own affiliate program on their website, which pays a 10% commission. So you're not always gonna get the best commission by referring sales to Amazon, but the advantage is you can earn commissions on hundreds of thousands of products. So this is probably where most people are gonna get started, but down the road, you may decide to reach out to companies directly and establish one-on-one -on -one affiliate relationships directly with them, rather than going through an affiliate network like CJ or Impact Radius or utilizing Amazon Associates. Now on the topic of affiliates, if you are going to monetize your blog with affiliate marketing, you are going to need a affiliate disclosure on your website. I use a free plugin that's going to add this text right here to every single article on my website. And that simply says, some of the links on this site are affiliate links. That is required by the FTC. You are legally required to disclose if you are receiving compensation from brands on your online platform. If you don't disclose that, you could get fined by the FTC. So trust me guys, when I say it, don't do that. Make your disclosures known. I use a free plugin. I'll show you guys what that is right now. If we go back to my website, it is called WP Affiliate Disclosure. And if you wanna download it, you just go to your plugin section. But if you click on this right here, uh, I have a new, I have a rule here basically for every article. I'll click on edit and it shows this affiliate disclosure before my post content at the very top. Um, and I have this being shown on every single article. You could just do it yourself by pasting that in at the top, but I would rather do it this way. That way I know that I didn't forget it. And this shows up at the top of all of my posts. So this is a free plugin called WordPress Affiliate Disclosure that's gonna add that little piece of text to all of your articles and make sure that you are following the required uh, disclosures for affiliate marketing. So here we have the last 28 days and here we have the different conversions. So on December 27th, I earned a commission. December 28th, I earned a commission. And on Dece uh, January 1st, I earned a commission. These are $100 commissions each. You can see one pending approval, and that is a $100 commission. So that's 100 bucks. That's $200 and $300 from AcreTrader. Hopefully more to follow. You can see I am getting clicks every single day. Uh, sometimes a lot of clicks, sometimes not so many. And again, this is why I love having pretty links because I can go over here to my pretty links and I can click on the button here that says clicks and it shows me exactly how many clicks I'm getting on my website across all of my links and I can see what's getting clicked on here. So there's my earnings proof for AcreTrader. Now let me log into CJ Affiliate and show you $75 of commissions owed and if I go here to um, this entire year, it should show uh, $30 in commissions. So yeah, I earned two $15 commissions. That's for two leads. I've had 11 total clicks this year and hopefully a lot more to follow.
All right, guys, so now I'm gonna talk about how to figure out your content roadmap for your blog. So assuming that you already know uh, what niche you want to be into and now you're ready to start creating content, I wanna to talk to you about how I decide what articles I want to write. And it all starts with the almighty Google because the truth is that is where your traffic is going to come from. It's gonna come from Google. It's gonna come from people looking for information and then stumbling upon your online resource. And this is going to allow them to visit your page and then eventually click on your links. So it all starts with the Google search. So I wanna start off here by entering an incognito mode. That way we know that nothing is being skewed by my individual searches. Uh, so I do that by going up here and doing file new incognito window and you should do the same exact thing before doing this because uh, your search results are personalized based on what you're looking for so if i go here and i just type in my niche which is farmland investing i look at what is followed up okay i see farmland investing platforms farmland investing for non-accredited investors farmland investing canada farmland investing, an overview, book returns, etc. So this is what I use to figure out what content to write. For example, I wrote an article on farmland investing for non-accredited investors. Uh, I don't know if it's ranking yet. Let's go ahead and see. And uh, number one, literally ranking number one for that search term. That's incredible, guys. Um, this is an ad. This is an ad. This is an ad. And this is my blog, farmlandriches.com. So if I click on this, it's gonna bring me right to my website. Uh, and I think I actually have an article specifically on that topic. Um, I'm pretty sure I wrote an article about farmland investing for non-accredited investors, but uh, the fact that my blog showed up, period, regardless in first place is really good. So anyway, that is basically, and then actually that's funny, there's my other blog, investingsimple.com. So uh, it's populating in the results here, but I, uh, my article for this for non-accredited investors, I'm surprised that didn't show up unless I'm confusing it with something. Um, I do have best farmland investing platforms. Maybe I don't have the one for non-accredited, but anyways, this is where I do my searches. It is whatever populates in Google. Uh, same thing with comparisons. For example, if I, if I was gonna, if, if for example, I'm affiliated with Acre Trader, if I'm wondering what articles I should write, I just type in Acre Trader and I see what populates, okay? So for example, Acre Trader Review. I already have an Acre Trader Review, but I'm not ranking for it because that's highly competitive. But these other things are things that I would potentially write articles about, like Acre Trader Minimum Investment, for example. But this right here, Acre Trader versus Farm Together, if we click on that, again, you're going to see I rank number one for that because I wrote the article Acre Trader versus Farm Together. So that is a comparison article, and that is something that I would write. So essentially, the first thing you're going to do is take your keywords uh, or, or basically take your topic and see what people are looking for. So with our rowing example, I would just type in rowing machine and I would see what people are looking for. Rowing machine versus treadmill. There's a good comparison article or value article. Rowing machine versus bike. Rowing machine versus elliptical. Rowing machine versus recumbent bike. Rowing machine concept two. These are all things I would be jotting down, which will eventually become part of your overall content roadmap. Uh, you can also do specific searches for rowers like concept to rower and see what people are looking for. Concept to rower review for sale, model D, dimensions. Another thing you may do is start following up that search with the letters of the alphabet. Concept to rower A, people are searching assembly, alternative, um, availability. So then I would try the letter B and see what people are searching for. Then I'd try the letter C the letter D, E, F, and so on, and just look at what people are searching for. And I'm gonna write all of this down in a spreadsheet of things people are searching for. And then you're gonna take that whole list and you're gonna compile it into your content roadmap. So this is something that's gonna take you a while to do here, guys. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how I did this for Farmland Riches, and it will hopefully allow you to understand how this works. So back to my blog here, 
We understand now that I have my main article, which is my beginner's guide to investing in farmland. And this is what we call the hub or my cornerstone piece of content. This is the longest article on my blog. It's over 5,000 words. And this is the article I'm ultimately trying to rank for. And so, for example, for the blog on uh, rowing machines, so we'll go to rowingbasics.com. If I was going to do this blog, the very first article I would write would be a very thorough article about, you know, best at home rowing machines or how to start rowing at home. Something like that would be my main cornerstone article that I'm ultimately looking to um, rank in search. And then what you're going to do is you're going to have this be like a choose your own adventure book where basically as people are reading along, this article is going to point out to your different articles. So here we have a section on what is farmland investing. I just have some sources mentioned types of farmland investments, but then we're going to get into some other stuff. We have farmland investing trends, how to earn money, how to invest in farmland. So now it talks about accredited investors. And then I have a link here to my best farmland investing platforms, which is another article on my website. Okay. Uh, as we keep going down, it talks about crowdfunded investment platforms. And then I have a dedicated review section of my website, which includes all of my platform reviews. And it also includes, uh, recent posts and categories. I also have um, individual reviews of these platforms all linked up here. So yeah, for example, if you're reading this and you read about harvest returns and you're curious, so you click on it and it links to that review. Uh, hopefully you guys are beginning to see how this is a bit like a choose your own adventure uh, story here where as you go through here, you can read the full articles. So you have this main piece of cornerstone content that links out to all of your smaller articles on your site. So that being said, guys, like I said, I only have 12 articles. So let me draw out for you what the actual content roadmap looks like for this blog. And um, obviously the bigger your blog becomes, the more complicated this is going to be. And that right there is a perfect example, guys, of how this opt-in works when somebody goes to exit the website. This shows up and people can drop their name and email to get that free guide. And as I said, 13 people have already done this, even though my site's getting a very small amount of traffic. All right, guys, so don't mind my handwriting here, but this is the main cornerstone article here called How to Invest in Farmland. And this is the main article that's gonna point out to other areas on my website. So it points out in this direction to different types of farmland investments. So one of the ways to invest in farmland is through crowdfunded real estate platforms. So let me go ahead and draw that out now. So in the main article, it talks about crowdfunded investment platforms for farmland investing and that's pretty much all of the different companies that i talk about on my site so farm together acre trader farmland lp all these different companies so i mentioned the farmland investment options i talk about crowdfunded investments and then i link out to all of the different reviews that i have written on my blog so this is going to link out to things like Acre Trader Review, uh, Farmland LP Review, Harvest Returns Reviews, all of my different review articles. So I'll make a note of that here. So any of my review articles are linked out to in that section. Um, I also link out to an article on farmland REITs. So that's another way you can invest is you can invest through crowdfunding. You can also invest through REITs. So let me make a note of that here. So it also mentions farmland REITs as an investment, and I have an article about that. Um, I also have articles comparing investing in farmland versus investing in the stock market and other things like that. And so this is pretty simple, guys. It's only 12 different articles, but this is basically what it is. You have this main resource at the top called How to Invest in Farmland. It talks about different avenues for investment, like crowdfunding platforms or REITs. I have a separate article that points to about different farmland investing REITs. I have a separate article it points out to on the six best farmland investing platforms, which is this one right here. And then I also have individual links to all of those reviews uh, that will all, again, every single article too that links out is going to link back to the main article. So for example, um, all of these individual review articles link back to this main article. This crowdfunding platform links back, the REITs article links back, 
and each of these articles also all link back to that main resource. So the point is your main cornerstone article is going to link out to all of your smaller articles in a choose your own adventure style of format, but then all of those individual articles <coughs> But then all of those individual articles themselves are going to link back to your main resource, which is going to point links back. And that is how you're going to set up your content roadmap is you're looking to set up these choose your own adventure series within your website. Mine just has one since this website has just 12 articles, but bigger blogs are going to have multiple cornerstone pieces that all link out and link back to that main resource. And this is how you build authority with your blog. So once you get all of your content together or a couple of key articles on your website, the next thing you want to start thinking about is link building because this is ultimately what's going to allow you to have a successful blog and this is receiving links from other reputable resources online. And this is all going to give you a number which is called your domain authority or other sites are going to call this your DA. So when you start off, you're going to have a very low domain authority of probably like a one to a three. And then over time, that number is going to increase based on getting links from other blogs. So right now, just for example, uh, Farmland Riches, uh, we are sitting at, I'll write this down, the Farmland Riches website is sitting at a DA of around seven. And then Investing Simple, just to write this down here, Investing Simple has a DA of around 35. So Farmland Riches is a brand new website. It started off as a one, but because of getting a couple of links, it well went up to a seven. And Investing Simple has been around for about three years, but the domain itself, investingsimple.com, is quite a bit older, which gives it a boost. So that's sitting at a DA of 35. So by building links to your website itself, that DA is going to go up over time. And the higher that DA is, the easier it is to rank higher in search. So for now, let me just clear all of this out of here. And I want to tell you my strategies for building links. And it's pretty simple. So my biggest source for links for my blog is something called Haro or Help a Reporter Out. This is an email service that goes out three times a day on business days and non-holidays where it's basically reporters who are writing stories who are looking for sources. So I have literally gotten dozens of links from Haro. I've gotten links from blogs like Go Banking Rates, Yahoo Finance, um, really big blogs I've gotten links from from filling out Haro queries. It's completely free. What you're gonna do is go to haro.com, sign up with your email, and then three times a day, you're gonna get an email about um, the source requests, and you can fill them out and supply information and give them a link to your blog. And if they do use your quote, oftentimes they will give you a link back to your website. So that is one of the easiest ways. Another one is going to be guest posts. So we're going to call that GP. That's when you reach out to other blogs in your niche and ask them if you can guest post on their website. Uh, it's pretty difficult to get these because so many people are asking for them. But usually I find I have about a 5% success rate. So if I send out 20 emails, maybe one person says yes. Um, another example or option is cross-linking but that's not really gonna help you until you have higher domain authority. This is where one blog links to you and then you link back to them. Now Google does frown upon this or they kind of make it so it's not as important in terms of ranking because it's kind of a, uh, a, a gameable strategy where somebody can uh, you know, set these links up and, and it's not really a true indicator anymore of like a good quality website. So what people are doing instead is like a three-way linking. So that's a little bit more confusing, but let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, there are some blogs out there that try to do this, this thing where um, they'll have uh, three websites, okay? And so what they'll do is they'll have website number one, website number two, and then they'll have website number three, okay? So this right here, this is your website, website number three. They would say to you, hey, will you link to this resource here? And then we will actually, from a different website, link back to your website. That way, Google doesn't see this two-way street thing happening, which may invalidate the link. 
So that's common these days too, is to have three websites involved with a cross-linking um, process for building links. So that's pretty much it, guys. You've got to go on Haro and fill out queries, or you have to reach out to blogs for guest posts, or you can ask for link swaps. Those are not very popular or effective anymore, but this three-way link swap is pretty effective because uh, it doesn't have this two-way street thing that kind of cancels out the link. Um, but that's pretty much the main thing. I don't recommend buying links. That's a bad strategy. So uh, don't don't buy links, don't sell links. That's not really a good strategy and it's, it's kind of a slimy business practice. But that is how I build links for my website. And uh, that's pretty much the entire process, guys. Once you have good content and good framework for your blog, you start creating these... Um, cornerstone pieces of content that all link back to each other and then you get links built for those pages on your website over time and that's going to allow you to slowly begin showing up in Google's search results over the next 6 to 12 months. So the last thing I want to cover here with you guys is some tips on outsourcing certain aspects of this business to other people. So if you are somebody who's fortunate enough that you have some money that you want to invest into your blog, uh, in my opinion, your best use of that money is investing in content. In my opinion, that's the most time-consuming aspect of blogging is writing all of that necessary content. So I recommend Upwork for finding writers. You can literally click right on the writing section here and look for writers based on what you're looking for. Uh, so Upwork is pretty useful for that. I also utilize friends and family. I actually have a couple of family members that work for Investing Simple uh, and do content creation for us. You could also literally just go right up here and type in WordPress and you can get all kinds of experts, uh, WordPress developers, SEO security, and you can hire somebody right here if you're looking to invest a little bit of money in optimizing site speed or on-page SEO, all kinds of different stuff. I also recommend Fiverr, and as I said to you guys, that's where I got my ebook designed. So you can literally just type in like ebook cover, and it's stupid cheap for some of these, like 35 bucks. I will do a cover layout design and formatting for a PDF. For $50, you can get a pretty decent looking lead magnet for your website. So that's the main sources I use for outsourcing is Upwork and Fiverr. And like I said, the main thing I would recommend is outsourcing content creation as that is typically the most consuming, uh, time consuming part. However, if you are brand new getting started, you could do it all yourself and you're going to learn a lot in the process and you can bootstrap and save money, which means you will have a profitable venture in a much shorter period of time because you're putting your own sweat equity into your business. So anyways, guys, that is going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you made it to the very end, go ahead and drop me a comment down below. I'm always curious how many people actually stick around to the end of these marathon videos. Videos. I had a lot of fun making this video guys and I hope it helps a lot of people launch a successful blog this year and if you end up having success with your blog please feel free to come back to this video and share that with others um, that being said guys if you do want to sign up for Bluehost and you haven't already there is an affiliate link down below I also have that affiliate link for plug and law if you're looking for your site disclaimers and different things like that or feel free to just bookmark this video and read visit it when you're ready for those steps. A uh, huge shout out again and thank you to Bluehost for sponsoring this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for future notifications. That being said, guys, I will see you in the next video and good luck with your brand new blog.